Attention, attention. The following is the intents of the fire evacuation system. Repeat, intents to unquick. Please disregard. Hello everybody, good morning and welcome. We're gonna talk about creating a vision statement. You know, I was thinking once upon a time I went to the ball game in Toronto with my two uncles and uh, they are amazing guys to have together in the same place. And one of them was a professor of criminology of all things. And he had some very, very good philosophical ideas about the world huge influence on me more than I think he even knows because he's really the only scholar in the family and uh well until that I joined up <laughs> but uh, in any case we're walking out of the ball game and he said something very interesting to me which was that he said all these people that you see here walking out and if you've ever left a ball game there's just like thousands of people walking out of there he said some of these people tonight they're gonna die some of these people tonight are going to get pregnant. Some of these people tonight are going to have a baby, etc. in their family. He went through this whole list of potentials. And he said, life is a series of exchanges. And that's really what crafting a vision statement is like, is recognizing that life is a series of exchanges and that you're going to need to constantly negotiate with yourself. And that negotiation is never going to end. And you are the adversary with whom you're going to negotiate. And um, that's a very interesting thing to keep in mind. So hello, good morning, Andrew and Mary, and uh, good to see you all here. Thanks for saying hello in the chat. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. They were testing the fire alarm here this morning, but hopefully that's all done, but we might hear some noises. Um, but we're gonna talk about crafting a vision statement so that you can negotiate through life as a series of exchanges. And one of the reasons why that's so powerful is this morning I got up, I didn't feel like going to the gym at all. And uh, yet I, saw, I found myself because of having a vision statement and the personal operating system that one creates out of the vision statement, I found myself on the floor in the gym automatically without having to really do anything, I just was suddenly there. And I remember I was looking at the TV, there was some guy who was uh, not particularly interesting to me, blah, blah, blahing on the TV. They were talking something about diets and cooking, and then they switched to talking about how he was celebrating a certain anniversary with his wife. You know, the usual la di da sheeple stuff that they have on network television. And uh, I suddenly just thought, wow, it's amazing. I actually got myself to the gym, even though I didn't want to be here. And I'm whinging on and griping about sheeple TV. 
And I thought the world is just perfect <laughs> as it is. And that's another sort of thing of having a vision statement is you remind yourself of your own inner combats, your own dislikes, the like-dislike monster, as uh, Adi Shankaracharya calls it in the Atma Bodha, uh, which you got to read once upon once in your life. And you're just negotiating constantly, right? And it's the same thing with memory training. You're going to sit down, you're going to memorize a deck of cards, or you're going to learn a language or whatever the heck it is you're going to do, you're just going to constantly be in the state of negotiation. And what you want is that moment where you're sitting there like I was in the gym this morning and you're just like griping about something and you catch yourself and you realize the world's perfect just the way that it is because you have systems that get you to do the things you want to do, even if you don't feel like doing them and then they're done and then you feel great and you just have a much better mindset and an attitude. And creating a vision statement is key to this central. I never used to believe it. I used to throw this idea out and just thought it was absolute garbage, woo-woo nonsense, but it's not, at least not in my experience. I've been doing it ever since, years and years and years, and uh, redo it, and uh, redo it all the time, and I recommend you do as well. So let's see here. Andrew is here, and Rohit is here. David's here from Tennessee, got your courses a few years back. Thanks for that, David. Thanks for saying hello, letting us know. Sean is here from New Jersey. Wonder whereabouts in New Jersey. Uh, as you probably know, I taught at Rutgers for a while over there in New Brunswick and hung around in Mountain Lakes a fair amount. I like that area. Very beautiful state. All right. So uh, anyway, the reason I mention it is because a lot of people, they're failing with memory training, which needs to be consistent. And in order to get that consistency going, I've found it very useful in many areas of life to just have a simple vision statement. So we'll talk about doing that today, some tips around that, but we're going to look at it from the high order because tips are only useful when you actually know the theory and the strategy and the highest possible bird's eye view so you can actually skip the tips. You know, the tips and the tricks and all that sort of stuff are things you discover along the way based on foundation, right? So that's what we're going to make sure we cover and uh, some stories and whatnot along the way of uh, when I failed to do this and of course your contributions. So if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, how you're feeling and um, any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat as we go along and i uh, got some cool stuff coming up including the Magnetic Mary Method vision statement, in case you're interested, at the end and some uh, previews of what's coming up. And um, answer this question from Francois, who asked, why do you do these things like helping us? I'm just curious, more blessings to you. And so we'll talk about that at the end and answer that in depth because, well, the answer may surprise you and it might help and inspire you. And Mary gives the thumbs up to that. Excellent, 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 Mary. Good to see you're with the program. Who else is with the program? Uh, we'll see the 80-20 rule in effect, I'm sure. Now, let's talk from the higher order first, get the bird's eye view. Why exactly is it that people memorize things in the first place? If you're going to create a vision statement, you might want to think about why are you learning to memorize? What is the point? Uh, this is very, very important because some people just have an abstract idea of why it would be good to have a better memory, or they're just really aware of the pain involved in their current state of memory. So yeah, I got an email from someone and I get them frequently, but most recently, you know, losing, getting fired because they can't remember things at work. This would fall under our category here of professional qualification. So if you are in any fear that you're not handling at work, you're overwhelmed, you're in danger of losing your career or having to start a new career or whatever's going on, well, then that would be your reason for why that you might want to learn how to memorize things. And by memorize things, I mean really get them into long-term memory in a way that is reliable and so that you actually know why and how your memory can do the things that any memory champion knows how to do and uh, direct that at your professional qualification. And learning languages is not just about communicating with people. But it can also be for professional qualification. It can be for long-term brain health. Uh, it's just known that bilingualism is a great strategy for lifelong brain health. It's not like you have to learn the language to absolute total proficiency. Even just being relatively bilingual is extremely powerful just for brain health alone. And then you get all kinds of other benefits, such as 
oh, that's why those people are that way, <laughs> you know, or uh, insights into culture, insights into all kinds of things where you suddenly see more about the human experience because you're now seeing it from the lens of how other people label the world. The world. Claiming life is in the house, stopping by. Time to disconnect for the night. Yeah, sorry, uh, we were starting a little bit late, but uh, if you heard my story at the beginning, you know some of the clues about why we started a little bit late. The Incredible Hulk raised his ugly head, and he wasn't so incredible this time. Plus, they were also testing the fire alarms here in the building. But thanks for saying hello. Really appreciate it. David says he loves the live broadcast. That's excellent, David. Thanks for letting us all know. Really appreciate it. And uh, great to see you here. All right. So, yeah, learning languages. Like Maybe what you want to do is think about why would you memorize? Why would you learn these skills? Like really push that why. I always recommend people try to find five times why, right? So if it's going to be learn language, can you actually collect five reasons why that learning a language is good for you? This is just the beginning of the vision statement. We've got a lot more to go than this. But it's a really, really good rule of thumb. Can you think of five reasons why? Why are you going to improve yourself professionally? Can you get five reasons? Knowledge and leadership, what, what might that mean? Well, just general knowledge so that you can show off and uh, make other people look bad because you beat them up intellectually. That's not a good reason why, is it? Not at all. I, I, I met someone recently and that was their, their, their goal. They wanted to be able to remember more so that they could defeat and crush their opponents. And I pushed back on that because that doesn't seem like a very good why, reason why to become a person of knowledge. It's not really a particularly good way to become a leader. And it's not necessarily that that was, you know, so serious in the intent. But usually when people mention things, there is some seriousness in it. And so, yeah, I hear that a lot, actually. And the reality is, is that that's power. But it's the dark kind of power that relies on force. Whereas there's another kind of power, which just is being able to negotiate and uh, being able to connect and have all kinds of different levels of expressing what you know and how you know without the need to win because you can't win. There is no winning. There's just the next and the next and the next and the next, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, for those of you who know the uh, reference and the futility that the author of the reference, was uh, trying to express to, to humans because there are better things than force out there. Crone Woman Walking is in the house. Good to see you. Thanks for saying hello. I love all these emojis you guys use. Keep the emojis coming. I got I to gotta get more into the world of emojis for sure. Um, so knowledge and leadership, you want to think about those things. And can you find five reasons why and make sure that in those reasons, you're not doing it for purposes of forcing anything to happen, right? Because that's not what real leaders do. Leaders show the way and they enable the water to flow in the direction it already wants to go, right? And that's part of why we make a vision statement is to make sure that we can flow in the way we already want to go, but that it's actually the truthful, honest way that we want to go. And we'll talk more about how to make sure that you do that. Another pe reason people... Uh, memorizes social competence. They want to be more competent socially. So what does that mean? The basic level is memorizing and remembering the names of people that you meet. And it's extraordinary when I hear people who learn this simple skill, how much better they feel, how much more competent they feel just as a human being. And the beauty is, is that everything's a name. So you nail that one and you're pretty much good to go. William is here from, from Kunming. Excellent. William, good to see you. I haven't seen your name for a while. Thanks for saying hello. And uh, how are things going over there? Uh, I've never been there, <laughs> but uh, hopefully uh, one day our paths can connect because certainly somewhere in that region is in the books eventually, one of these days. All right. So social competence is a huge thing. And then the lifelong brain health. But again, when you go through these, and I really want you to Get some notes. If you don't have something to take notes with, you might want to take some notes and um, try all of these on for size and see if you can find five reasons why. Five reasons why, and maybe more, ideally more actually. But, um, you know, just for an example, learning languages. For me, learning languages, just as an example. One is to be able to communicate better with 
the people who are in my life to be able to communicate better when traveling, to actually be able to dive deeper into the culture, to have that lifelong brain health through the development of the neural networks that grow and everything that we know about bilingualism, and um, also for the memory exercise, the actual application and exploration of using mnemonics for language learning to find more out about it, to find the limits and to find little advantages that help push those limits because there are many and through consistent daily exploration of all this i've discovered so many things that i never thought would be possible and then that allows me to put that forward for you and so that's another thing is like a, a scientific process of discovery and then of course ultimately to be able to understand more about what language is right now that might sound a little bit on the uh mystical level, but it is, it isn't really, it's very practical. And how you understand more about what language is, is that you work with it, you, you absorb it, you practice it, you engage with it, and you essentially speak, read, write, and listen to it from memory in a way that increases what you know, either implicitly or explicitly by lived experience, putting it into memory so you can acquire that knowledge directly. It's very, very interesting. And so one of the cool things that I do every once in a while is I take a language course, even though it's not the most efficient or quote unquote best way to uh, learn a language. I sometimes just dive in and do it just to see what's going on. And I really hit the jackpot recently with one because it's um, only got two students in it, myself and the other person and uh, and the teacher. And you know, one of the, the biggest challenges with Mandarin Chinese is that there's just so many different ways that people speak it in the regional uh, changes and yada, yada, yada. And uh, one of the cool things there is that you you see so many things. So there's something called uh, Jiropu or uh, Juropu. And this, guy, this teacher, he has no idea what these things are. Then I'm able to, you know, uh, get the actual characters from my wife and then she sends a picture and then he goes, Oh, wow. Blah, blah, blah. And then, he, you know, he said, this is what we eat in our region and yada, yada, yada. So there's this sort of depth in there and, um, yeah, it's just cool. It's cool. So th th there's five reasons why I just encourage you to, to look for multiple, multiple reasons. Uh, and I, it, it it might just seem like, Oh my God, I'm going to write down five reasons why you, you might think that in the beginning, but see if you could just get yourself to do it because it's not necessarily logical. You don't need to necessarily understand why it works or how it works or even if it works. Just give it a try. I can remember the first time that I stopped the tape, you know, on one of these audiobook self-help programs where Tony Robbins is jumping up and down and he's saying, stop the tape now, do the exercise. And then, you know, you don't do it. And then he says, did you stop the tape? And did you do the exercises? And uh, he says, no, you didn't. Well, then stop and do the tape, do the exercises. So I just re always, re always remember this because I finally became the person who stopped and did the exercises and you can just see back. And it's not any kind of hypnosis. It's not any kind of propaganda. It's not any kind of brainwashing. The reality is, is that knowledge comes from doing in almost most cases. So if you don't do the exercises, you will never know if they will work. You never know why they work. You don't know how they work. And in some cases, you just sit there and develop an anger and a hate for all those people who get benefits. And you wonder, well, uh, well, it's because they do the exercises. And uh, there's many, many mysteries in life that work that way. And that's one of them. So give this a try. Rohit Gupta says, memory vision, A, one, pass a tough test, two, get a great job, and consulting gig, three, make more money, five, become an expert, uh, or four, become an expert, five, have fun, write a blog, teach others. Excellent, Rohit. Excellent. We'll talk about this uh, point about making more money in a minute, because that's a very interesting point. Uh, actually, it'll be more than a minute, but we're going to get to the whole money thing. And uh, I think what you'll discover there will be very interesting to you. You'll have to split test yourself, see how it goes, but uh, I think you'll find it very useful. Jiva, I've been learning IT with your support. Thank you from India. Well, thank you for being here. Namaste, Jiva. And I like that, you know, the Sanskrit word Jiva uh, is a, is like your name. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it is the same thing, but um, 
I really like that that word in Sanskrit. Wonderful to have you here. Thanks for being here. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, pop them in the chat. So why are we going to do all this? Well, that's because there's a big problem that we need to solve. And the problem is, is that memory techniques require consistent application. Consistent application. You will never, ever get anywhere if you do memory training on Monday and then you don't do it again until next Monday and then you don't do it again until maybe two Thursdays later and then you never do it again until two months later on a Monday. You know, like you've got to actually be consistent about it. And there's a number of reasons why. We don't have to get into it, but doesn't it just make sense? If you're going to go to the gym and you do one push-up and then you don't do another push-up for, you know, another six days or whatever, you, you, your muscles aren't going to pop. It's just not going to happen. You've got to actually go to the gym on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, and then you've got to do some work on your upper body, some work on your lower body, rotate it around, give yourself sufficient rest or whatever. But you've got to do it consistently. you got to do it consistently. And this is not a problem, actually. <laughs> this is just the way the world works. It's like piano, right? You're not going to, you're not going to play scales and remember scales or anything like that if you don't actually be consistent about showing up to the piano. The difference between the person who's playing concert piano and the person who isn't is consistent approach towards the goal of playing concert piano. The difference between the person who just enjoys playing piano or guitar or whatever is consistent application of the techniques by which one learns to play a piano. And playing piano and performing piano obviously split the channel at some level because you have self application just for your own enjoyment and then there's performance which then takes into account the enjoyment of others and you need to sort of practice the performance element but you can still manage those two things nacho is here just bought the magnetic mary method master plan one hour ago thumbs up to that thanks for letting us know and um, look forward to seeing your quote-unquote homework uh, as as i call it and uh really look forward to um seen some of your memory palace drawings and any questions you have and uh maybe you know seeing uh, what you what you generally think about what's happening in uh in the whole program there thank you so much for joining us and uh glad that you're here in our um in our effort as a public service to help promote what tony buzan called mental literacy i really appreciate that Good to see you. And what a cool name. I don't know if that's your real name or your screen name, but I like it, whatever it is. Nacho Montano. You ever hear that song from Frank Zappa, Montana? You gotta hear that. It's really awesome. <laughs> All right. Jiva says, give some tips about how to remember page to page. Let's talk about that. I'll review that at the end. Thank you for that question. Excellent question. And um, please say more about the nature of the books you're reading. All right. So, because it requires consistent application, we know this, that this is not anybody's fault. There's no finger to point. There's no one to blame. The brain is just built this way, as is the body, fitness, anything. We need to apply things consistently. Whether you're learning to memorize for any kind of memory competition, or you're just learning to memorize in order to learn a language, or for that professional certification, or to pass exams, or to do some of the things that Rohit mentioned, you know, get a great job. You're, you're not going to start this beautiful memory journey and then be like, got it, I'm there. No, the master continues to practice even in the absence for the need to practice because you need to continue to grow your skills. Now, we talked lots on previous live streams about the ba balancing the challenge frustration curve, so we don't need to rehearse that now. But the consistency never goes away, never goes away. It can't and it won't. And it's not even desirable for it to do so. So you, you know, that great line from Ghost Dog, the, uh, the path of the samurai is to be prepared to have, to execute one last move, even with your head cut off, right? That's what we're always preparing for, is to be prepared to execute one last move, even with our head cut off. Logos asks, does Australia hold memory competitions? As a matter of fact, it does. Um... So I'm actually speaking tomorrow, uh, I believe, with Tenzel Ali. I didn't memorize <laughs> when we're talking. Tenzel Ali has won the Australian Memory Championships four times. 
if memory serves. And uh, also Lynn Kelly competes in the Australian memory competitions. I don't know much about it, but those people would be people that you want to um, to talk to about that. And uh, great, great name, screen name, logos. Love that. Beautiful. So why do people find consistency very, very difficult? Well, one reason is that they do not have a why. Now, I just gave you an exercise that will help you figure out how to have many, many whys, many, many whys. So you go through the language, you go through professional things, you go through, etc., cetera. And um, then you got lots of whys. Now, whys, lists of whys is not necessarily a vision. So we're going to talk about crafting a vision statement. But if you don't have these things, and they're not true, because having a vision is not necessarily enough. It has to be a true vision. And we'll talk about testing later. But um, if you don't have this, it will rob you of momentum. You'll just drop it because it's not firmly connected enough in your mind to this vision that you've either seen or felt or heard in your ears, however you perceive the universe, however you process things, if you're visual or whatever. And we're all all of those things, but some of us just seem to have preferences. So that's a good thing to know. If you are not particularly visual, then it's a good thing to know that you might want to hear things, right? And then that will make it more real to you. Uh, but if you don't have those things, it's very difficult to get yourself into motion, and it can be extraordinarily difficult to stay in motion. And one of the things that you need to remember is that an object at rest stays at rest, right? And an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And if you, you know, this is Newton, but <laughs> if, if you really think about this, could the could this actually be the secret to the entire operations of the universe, including human behavior? If you just look around, the objects that are at rest tend to stay at rest, and the objects that are in motion tend to stay in motion, as do the people. Now, there's something, I think it's the Zepf's Law, which shows essentially that anything that's popular tends to only get more popular over time. And this is the object in motion staying in motion. And things that never get off the ground tend to stay never off the ground. And it's, ex or, you know, it's just, it's just that simple. So we can look at things that really should have lost popularity a long time ago because of them being thoroughly bankrupt and uh, filled with errors. And I don't need to make any specific reference, but there's all kinds of things in just, for example, uh, vaguely speaking, religions that obviously aren't true. Nobody buys into them anymore, not even the, the best uh, practitioners of them. But they're in motion, and they just tend to stay in motion. Uh, it's just that simple. And it's just that way with people who practice. If you practice, you get yourself in motion, and you do it long enough so that it's real motion, you will tend to stay in motion. But if you, do, if you just build the systems around you that keep you a couch potato, you will tend to stay at rest as a couch potato. And if that's you, don't fret. You can get out of it. You can get out of it. It's never too late. Never too late. But you have to get yourself in motion. And so having a real good reason why, and multiple reasons why, in addition to a statement that uh, has that vision that you can feel and touch and so forth, can be the thing that gets the ball rolling. And then you just got to keep the ball rolling so that you can stay in motion, right? Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if you're following the plot. And uh, we're still at the high order level here so that we have the theory, the foundations upon which to build. And so there's um, a hierarchy of needs that you may have heard of that helps us think this through. And so we have physiological needs that need to be covered in life. And so one thing that can happen that people are not particularly, uh, they're not consistent is because they're just scrambling around trying to take care of food, water, right? And one of the things, a charity that I've been involved with for years uh, called the Pollination Project, um, you know, I, I wanted to volunteer and go to places and, and they said, yeah, memory training, great. But, you know, these people are struggling to feed themselves. Like, how is memory training going to help them? And personally, I thought it probably would. But <laughs> in, in, in any case, we, we never went that that route because um, I found a, a better way to, to help in a more direct sense. And um, that was really great. 
in any case, um, there's something to, th to think about. So you, you might, like some people out there, they might be pummeling themselves and they're like, I can't get consistent with this, with this memory training stuff. And it can be that they just need to focus on something else first. They may need to address physiological needs that then allow them to proceed towards some of the more mental crafts. I think you could probably find the balance, but it's interesting and important to think about this. Then there's need for security. There's need for social aspects of your life. You need self-esteem needs and then other sorts of self-actualizing needs. Now, there's something missing from, from Maslow's hierarchy here, which apparently he had uh, written a book that was going to talk about this or somehow it never got out. But above this was self-transcendence. And that's a, a topic for another day, but obviously something I've been working on with my Sanskrit memorization project. So far, so good. Um, but let's check in with the chat and really think about this as you proceed. You may, and there are many ways you could make this little triangle, different words you could put in there, um, different ways to interpret it, to interpret security needs, like et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it could be income, it could be housing, all kinds of stuff can be involved in many of these things. Uh, but think about them, think it through, and then think about how your whys, those, those, that phalanx of whys that I've encouraged you to write down on paper, so it's actually in front of you, how that it maps out against a hierarchy of needs and how that you can proceed through the levels in order to use memory training to plug them in or to plug in missing things so that you can focus better on your memory training so that you can be more consistent and how having wise in the vision statement that we're going to talk about today can help. Avash says, do you have fixed time and day to recall and retrieve stuff from memory like in the morning when you wake up? Excellent question, Avash. If you're on my email list, which everybody here really should be, I'm going to be sending out a series about exactly that. So I'm going to save the answer for that. And the series really begins with that. It's detailed, mapped out. So if you're on my mailing list, which you can get at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT, it's the only way onto the mailing list, then you will be invited if you're interested in a series that's going to cover exactly time of day and uh, and things of that nature. So thanks for the question, Avash, and stay tuned for that. All right, if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And let's get into the, the nitty-gritty of personal vision creation for your memory. And so I highly encourage everybody to be taking notes on this stuff or put on the calendar when you're going to go through the replay. And... Uh, be advised that this replay may actually be taken away. So um, if you're here now and you want this stuff, stick around. I, I don't know exactly that I'm going to take this replay away, but also there's just the practical reality that um, everything on the internet is very, very endangered, and everything on the internet is endangered because people just simply forget. <laughs> they forget that all the resources that that they could possibly need are available at their fingertips. And then life, because they don't have a vision statement, because they don't have personal operating systems, they just get washed away. And um, the river of life and the river of competing interests that want to keep you enslaved just takes you away. So if this is of any interest to you whatsoever, go and get something to write with and follow through with this or put on your calendar when you're going to go through this replay and Make sure that you actually do it soon because you never know. Uh, and I myself might take this down. Um, and there's there's good reasons for why that should be the case. All right. So let's get into the, the, the meat of this, get started, and go all the way through. The personal vision creation is very, very simple. But you want to do this in writing. I would not recommend managing this in your head. It's not nearly as effective. Maybe it is for you, but uh, that's a risk that you want to take. And uh, all you need to do is get a simple journal. Simple journal like this. Pencil, pen, whatever you like. Uh, it can be a bigger journal. You could mind map it. Whatever you do, if you don't take action, you are putting yourself at the behest of the evil Dr. Forget. Whoa. And uh, every time he wins... A memory palace dies in heaven. Let's put it that way. All right, so personal vision creation. First 
answer these questions. Answer them in writing. Answer them in depth. How would you describe the person you want to become? So if you're going to learn to use memory techniques, you're going to do it consistency uh, with consistency, and you're going to do it consistently. How do you describe this person you want to become? Are you going to be this evil and distasteful person who uses all your knowledge to beat people over the head and into submission because you know uh, the exact dates of everything in history and all that stuff? Or are you going to be the kind of person who wants to put your knowledge in the service of others and uh, not have to win meaningless prizes? And I mean that, like think it through, because as we talked about earlier, there are people who want to learn these techniques just so they can intellectually crush their adversaries. They're really intellectually crushing themselves. But um, there are others who would love to learn all this so that they can help other people, so that they can enable themselves to actually be better doctors, to be better lawyers, etc. cetera. And uh, that's what you want to think about. And really think about it in terms of superheroes. Like, do you want to be the Incredible Hulk who's just smash, you know? Or do you want to be David Banner who's actually trying to think about, like, if I have to be cursed, <laughs> can I at least integrate this terrible aspect of, of my humanity so that it is channeled towards a positive outcome for others, right? And, and, and you can really reduce all of life to the Marvel Universe and think through the lens of these epic godlike characters, Thor, whatever you like. There's a reason why that I always have these things around me. They remind me of the epic nature of life. We really are little mini versions of these. These these stories do not come you know from outer space. They come from the minds of humans who are interpreting the real struggles that we have every single day. So, you know, uh, always be yourself. Unless you could be Batman, <laughs> and then always be Batman. Well, thank you for that super chat, uh, Crone Woman Walking. Really appreciate that, and um, glad you'll be reviewing it tomorrow. And I love that you have Monk Mode Day. Thank you so much for your support, always. And uh, look forward to any follow-ups that you want to share. And uh, yeah, appreciate that so much. Um, and if you all want to leave super chats, that's great as well. Um, it's always any uh, any every single penny actually counts believe it or not um and that's important because it enables me and anybody that teaches online it enables us all to help continue helping you so get yourself some superhero mythology or whatever i've always found that a useful tool is to think of you know if this were the Marvel Universe or whatever fictional universe, which character would I play and who would I want to become? Knowing I have to go through the origin story, knowing I'm going to have to have struggles, knowing there's going to be temptations and so forth, who do I want to be at the end? And if you've followed the things that I do for any length of time, you know that there's a particular character. He's not in the Marvel Universe, but close enough that I have uh, used as a mental model for a long time and uh, continue to do so because he's probably the best mental model for a guy like me. But you may have somebody different. All right. Logo says, I noticed while learning languages that I didn't need to put the words into a particular place as long as I had a strong visual for that word. That's all I needed. Did you notice this yourself? Great, uh, great observation, Logos. Yeah, that is totally possible. However, it doesn't scale. That's the difference. So if you want to scale, if you want to move really rapidly uh, for vocabulary on mass. Maybe you can do it without a memory palace. I just never have met anybody who's able to do it at scale. And, um, you know, look up Dr. Yip uh, if you want to see just how far scale can go. But in terms of just sort of random things, yeah, you, you, you can get away with that. However, I never do because I practice very, very much the actual location of things. But I will practice it in different ways at different times. So, um, you know... There's many examples. I just I just learned uh, an ji hua in, uh, in, in Chinese, which is like stick to the plan sort of thing. And I just have trained myself that I don't want to take the risk that I won't remember that oddball word that I'm learning out of nowhere. Um, so I stick it in a memory palace so that I can do recall rehearsal uh, very, very easily. It's just known where it is. And there's no, there's no risk there or very, very little. But just... 
random associations, hoping and wishing and praying, I'll figure it out. No, I want multiple levels of access to the information. So what are the multiple levels? Well, there's a place, then there's going to be the actual magnetic imagery, then there's the actual sound and meaning of the words themselves, and they're all located, focused in a particular place. But you know, if you can scale what you're doing, just the void of the mind and do, 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 and you find that efficient, go for it. I don't think very many people do. Dr. Yip didn't. And, uh, and I, I don't think he, he would advise it. Uh, and I, I don't think any, uh, uh, anybody would advise it at the end of the day. Plus the other thing is, and this is also what I mean by scale in case in case this is new to you, because scale has two things. Scale has the accumulation of vocabulary en masse, and then it has the accumulation of phrases in which you'll use the vocabulary en masse. So if you're going through your mind and you're just like, well, where was that? Now I'm going to, oh, what was that? Uh, I know you're going to add a sentence to it and it has no location. No, that's not, that's, that's not really going to be that you're going to add phrases to that. I mean, maybe it will be for you, but it, it certainly wouldn't be for me. If I'm going to add a phrase to that new word that I've just learned, then I'm going to want a palette upon which to develop that, right? So think of it this way. If you're going to be a painter, right? You're not going to, you're not going to paint on the sky and then go back and add more to the painting on the sky. You're going to want to know where the canvas is upon which that you're going to compound on, as I would say, more to the painting. You're going to want an actual background canvas that that can happen on. So, but it's relative to your goals. Uh, and the, the more one becomes fluent, so to speak, I don't like that word fluency very much, although I'm going to do something big with it uh, eventually here. The more that you get capable in a language, if we're talking about a language, then the more that you're going to be able to actually just um, rip that out as you're describing it, it's still not necessarily advisable, but the more it becomes possible to do that. Uh, I, in my experience, other people may have different experiences. And d this sort of circles back to what Jiva is asking about memorizing page to page, because in the beginning, you and relative to the nature of the learning project, you want to memorize page to page in a different way. But now often, relative to my goals. I'll just memorize directly from the page and use the page itself as a memory palace. But that's not how I would do it if I was having a large learning project strategy that I had to direct towards a particular outcome. I just don't happen to have those particular outcomes all that more, uh, all that much more often. But I may in the future. And so that will be my go-to technique, which is in the master plan. So um, check that out if you are if you have access to that course in the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. So Logos asks, who's the doctor you mentioned? Dr. Yip, Y-I-P, I believe, and uh, amazing. All right, so describe the person you want to become. This is your exercise, ideally in a memory journal. Then you want to think, what would you have if you were that person? Now, this is a bit of a trap, so be careful with it. And... Um, what you want to do is still let yourself go through it. We'll talk about later about why that this is important, why it's a trap, and then how to defang the trap. But go through it. What would you have? Would it be a yacht? Would it be a spaceship? Would it be what? What would you have? What would you really, really have? Adolfo is here from South Florida. Excellent. Adolfo, great to see you. And thank you for that epic post in our mastermind group. That is so super inspiring. Really appreciated that. And... Um, Fantastic, fantastic. Keep on keeping on in that regard. Love that. All right. So good to see you, Adolfo. Amazing. But literally, what would you have? What would you have? So let your mind go. Just be honest. And then we're going to test that honesty. And then, you know, where would you live? Ideal living environment, health, relationships. Really dig these through. There may be more things here than I'm listing uh, that you might want to explore but explore them and be super, super honest, be as greedy as you want, etc. You can correct all that later. And, uh, you know, what work would you do? What hobbies and personal interests would you have? What would your community be like? And then here's where part of that trap of what would you want maybe uh, is already going to uh, start to expose these inner conflicts. What would be your purpose and what would be your contribution? 
And you really want to think this through. And by the way, this is all first draft. This is all beta. You can all, ch you not only can you change it later, but you should expect that it's going to change and you will want to practice the skill of changing it over time because that's the nature of the world, change over time. But uh, the sooner you can think about purpose and contribution, the better. So again, those reasons why already set the stage for this, but you want to visit again and again and again. And you might be thinking, well, this is all so repetitive and you know, cross-indexing all sorts of things. Isn't that the way the world is? Isn't that the way your brain works? <laughs> Repetition, cross-indexing things. So now all we're doing is we're strategically repeating and cross-indexing on a page, and then we're setting the stage for doing it again and again to refine over time. This is why we practice. This is why we practice memory techniques in the first place, is to refine our approach over time. And I'm so glad Adolfo is here because he's a great exemplar of the processing over time and refinement over time. And he's had so many discoveries that I've learned from because he's constantly in the game, constantly having a an approach towards this exact outcome of having better and better skills with memory techniques. And he has a purpose. And as I just mentioned in our mastermind group, he posted something that, that just reveals a lot of purpose and contribution in what he's doing and possibly the highest order contribution of what he's doing. So that's excellent. All right. So again, don't think that you have to get this right the first time. It's precisely the kind of thing that you visit again and again and again. And I continually visit again and again and again. And it's super rewarding every single time. And you direct this at getting yourself to actually do the consistent work of training your memory so that you can pop. You can really hit those techniques. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what your IQ is. If anything speaks against IQ, it's the very fact that any brain can memorize stuff and then you can break and battle whatever limits you have because you can progressively proceed towards knowing more and more and more that just completely shatters any of those limitations. The real question is not about what you think intelligence is. The real question is what are you doing to craft your intelligence so that you're directing it towards goals and then actually accomplishing those goals. And we've talked on a previous live stream with Crone Woman Walking about exactly how that true intelligence is just that, the ability to set goals that you can actually accomplish and then accomplishing them. So ultimately that's all that matters. If you can see where you're at now, set goals that you can actually accomplish and you can accomplish them, that is intelligence. And that's what artificial intelligence is too essentially. So whether you're real or artificial, that's that's the game. That's the game. All right. So fill out all this stuff, personal vision creation, and then there's more. But um, before we continue on, if you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing in the chat. And uh, we're going to uh, get deeper into all of this vision statement stuff. But uh, one of the things to really, really consider as you go through this is where, where, where is it that you really want to go? Always think about where you really want to go. And can you be honest about that? Can you be honest about that? The more honest you are, then the more you're going to be able to test and the more you're going to be able to get out of this. Because I, when I was doing these things, I wasn't honest enough with myself and that that slowed down progress. So always keep that in mind as you go through these exercises. Honesty really matters. The most brutal and intense honesty that you can come up with. So what do you what do you say? Let me know in the chat. Should we carry on, or are you bored of all this stuff? And uh, time to take time to just close it off and save the rest for uh, for a private group. Let me know in the chat if you're interested in continuing because we've got some more exercises that will deepen this even further, or feel free, I can handle it. If you're bored, tired, not interested, you can do that too. Or you can pop in questions, but we're gonna, we, we, we wanna see just how interested and excited you are. Test me. <laughs> Test me and see if I will actually stop ahead of the program. Um, ooh, 
Here we go. David says, carry on, please. Thank you, David. <laughs> I, lo I love this 80-20 rule stuff. Really like to, to push it through, see who's watching, who's paying attention. Now, obviously, if you're driving, don't endanger yourself. If you're on a bike, don't squeal your brakes so you flip over. I've done that to myself, and uh, it hurts. Uh, landing on your on your back and etc. <laughs> All right, we're getting some uh, some interesting things here coming through. Some thumbs up from Logos Nacho. David says, "Carry on, please." Excellent, excellent. So, why do I do these things? Well, partly it tells the robots that uh, that you're engaged, that you're interested, but also I'm interested if you're interested because there's no fun in just uh, talking to talking to. I don't know. For all I know, could just be. Um, Whatever numbers I see here of many as of as many people are attending, it could be sock puppets or robots or whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of curious to see who's alive and who's awake and just what those percentages play out. And that testing is important in your own life. It might not be in this way, but it's just interesting to get uh, to get feedback. And I always appreciate those who are active. I also appreciate those who aren't active. By the way. Uh, because one of the things I hated, and I remember this one professor, he he was awesome, but he was also a bit obnoxious and annoying at the same time. But ultimately, he became part of um, part of one of my uh, uh, my MAs that he supervised. And uh, anyway, he used to be like really brutal with people and point them out, and you know, you have to answer this question, blah 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 blah, or you get no participation marks, etc. I never really liked that. This is eighty twenty rule. Some people just simply will not even type yes, even if they're interested. They don't know why they can't. I don't know why they can't. It's just the way the universe works. All right, so we're going to carry on, but let's catch up with the chat here. Adolfo says, lately I've been reassessing my professional and personal goals. I've decided to take off the fall and possibly spring semesters so I can focus on my physical and mental health. I think that's very wise, Adolfo. There are years when I was in university when I probably would have benefited greatly from pulling back, reassessing, etc. And I often think if I were to do it all over again, I wouldn't, I would not, I wouldn't even go to university at all. But I think of that from the current state of the world, how it is now, and I really don't know. Everything seems to have played out just as it should. But I think that's still very wise. And there certainly were periods where I could have taken off. And uh, actually, there was a period where I was able to take off, so to speak, which I talked about on last week's podcast and blog post about dealing with student debt. So if you're a student and you at university and you're doing student loans and so forth, don't miss that. Make sure that you go to the Magnetic Memory Method blog, read that, listen to the podcast, whatever you prefer. And we'll probably do a video version of that. But one of the things that happened to me is that I was actually able to take a year off of paying tuition. And I, I, all of the ins and outs of that are covered there. But maybe Adolfo, you have that option as well. So it's not like you have to unhook everything, but you can take a year off to reassess, still stay in a program, but not have to pay tuition. Because I know some programs, they, they sort of lock you in. And if you stop, then you're in trouble or you have to restart things. And it kind of pushes people unusually through the things. Anyway, longer story, but that's all covered. Uh, and it's a strategy. It's actually a strategy. And I don't know if it relates, but... Uh, I thought that was really, really awesome that I was able to do that. And it enabled me to go live in a different country. Or it was part of what enabled me to go live in a different country and have all kinds of amazing experiences. All right. Wallace is here from Kenya. All right. Kenya, uh, do you also say uh, you're a ho in, in, in Kenya as hello? Um, that was uh, something that came up on a previous live stream. Excellent. Excellent. Good to see you here, Wallace. Appreciate it having a chance to interact with you. And thanks for being active in the chat. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up and let's go. So the um, next sort of thing you want to consider is ask yourself, once you've done all these vision statements, once you have all these reasons why, and you've started to answer these questions, ask yourself, if I actually could have this now, would I actually take this vision? Would we take this vision? If yes, great. If no, then you want to revise it. But really, really pretend that you do have it. So if it's like, I want to be Elon Musk and I want to have my own spaceship and yada, 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 whatever that is, right? Then um, pretend that you actually have it and just ask yourself these questions. Write them down. This is really, really important. 
What does having this bring for me? What does it bring for others? And then try to five times each one, at least, right? And I really suggest that you do this with a partner, someone who knows you, someone who can BS test you. What does this bring for me and what does it bring for others? Now, obviously, what it brings for others is going to be more important, but what it brings for you is got to be in the mix, right? Because you will need certain things in order to be your highest possible self. And you want to know as much as you can about what those things are in order to be your highest possible self, but you're also going to need to serve others in order to be your possible self so that you can have certain mental things going on, even just the brain chemicals. If you're not contributing, you're not going to switch on the the brain chemicals that really maximize your health, manage your serotonin, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and actually help defeat the ways that your serotonin, apparently, this is all allegedly in the brain science, but um, allegedly your brain is monitoring your place in the social hierarchies and actually managing your effectiveness. So you really need to think about these these things and try to push yourself always at least minimum of five answers. So what does having this vision, once you've crafted it, bring to you? And what does it bring to others? And again, I suggest you do this with a partner. All right. Um, then I'm going to catch up with the chat here in a second. Thanks, Wallace, for Habari. That's a great word. Sounds great. How would we memorize Habari? So um, we, I'm, I'm already thinking about, wasn't there an elephant character, Bar, Barbar or something like that? So I'm going to start to think of him. I don't even really quite remember if that's what he was. But um, And then uh, you know we've got to think of something with Ha. So um, Hasbro, remember? Oh, no, you probably don't remember Hasbro. <laughs> I mean, Hasbro was a was was something that's a reference but there was this show i remember or a, a little s segment a skit hasbro and uh so i'm gonna start at that and barbar i think harry barbie that's a good one david and uh habari so gonna gonna have to work on that oh but haplo remember that um that series the death gate cycle those novels maybe you don't but uh, anyway there was a there was a character there ha ha hablo and um Maybe he has a hairy Barbie. I'm going I'm to try and think of this. The thing with Hablo in the Deathgate cycle, um, Margaret Weiss, I think, was one of the novels, and the novelists. It was a team. Anyway, I read this when I was a very young person. But he had all these tattoos, uh, Hablo, and they would glow. And he had some sort of special powers in that novel. Anyway, Arturo says, Babar the Elephant. Ah, so, okay. So it was something like that. And I think that's exactly right. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Arturo. Good to see you. Wallace says it's Swahili. Great. So we're still, you know, we're going to think of this. And is that pronounced right, uh, Wallace? Habari? Now we might want to link it to you as well, right? So um, uh, we, we want to think of like, do we know anyone named Wallace? Edgar Wallace, for example. And so that's, uh, that's going to be an important thing. And then we're going to want to remember that it was... Um, it was Kenyan, right? Or for, So they speak Swahili in Kenya and uh, Habari. Uh, so normally what I would do is in a memory palace, I start to put this and yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll stick it up here. And so I'm going to get a uh, Haplo and he's got a hairy Barbie and, uh, Edgar Wallace is writing a novel on the hairy Barbie and, uh, Ken, Hey, uh, David, this is amazing because Ken and Barbie, Kenya, you see, this is, this is, you know, uh, Mark Shannon, who's who's a memory champion and a grandmaster of memory. He and I, we, we, I was asking him one time, like, do you ever find this weird synchronicity in things? It's like the right image just shows up at the right time all the time. This is one of the, and he's like, yeah, it happens to be all the time. So this is one of those examples of uh, magnetic synchronicity. So uh, <laughs> the hairy Barbie is there because Ken, Kenya, get it? See, synchronicity, uh, magnetic memory synchronicity. Well, it says Hakuna Matata is Swahili for no problem. Hakuna Matata. Yeah, that's a that's our problem-free philosophy, right? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, correct pronunciation. All right. So Habari. Beautiful. From Wallace. Excellent. So we're going to um, we're going to benefit from just memorizing that. Everybody put on your best hat and do that. Trong is here from Vietnam. If we are to memorize a book, do we have to create a memory palace for every chapter of the book? I mean, every chapter we have to create a memory palace for it. Let's talk about that uh, later in the chat. Thank you for that question, 
Trong, and uh, great to see you here. Thank you for being here. Arturo says, nice to catch the live chat. It's 5 a.m. in Paris. Well, thank you for being so up so early in Paris. Excellent, excellent. Wonderful. I love Paris. Beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's hope they don't burn it to the ground. <laughs> All right. So please do these exercises. Nothing will happen unless you're in action. And remember, an object that is at rest will stay at rest, and an object that it is, mo is in motion will tend to stay in motion. So get yourself in motion. It's simple. It's just a little booklet or a pad or whatever. Start to write this stuff down. I myself had to badger myself, get it done, get it done, get it done, and I finally started to do it, and everything changed just by the simple thing of answering questions on paper. And it's really, really important not to try and juggle it in your mind because you want to revisit it and you want to revise. This is how the evil Dr. Forget gets hold of you. He holds you in stasis. He convinces you. Oh, you can just do it in your head. Oh, no, you can't. You can't. You have to take action. You have to move. Movement is often more important than meditation. And of course, the best meditations in many cases are ones that involve some form of movement. We know this from the brain scans. So, um, you know, know it for yourself. <laughs> Science, scientific uh, reporting doesn't necessarily get you the actual action. You've got to put it into action. All right. So moving forward, now, once you've gotten to this stage, then you want to pump in your personal values. But first, before we go, I saw a question that I wanted to answer. Avash says, Anthony, why don't you post the time and date for your live sessions? Let's actually uh, talk about that later because it relates to uh, some very, very important things. But thank you for uh, your interest about that. <laughs> Wallace says, T.O.P., think on paper. I love that. Think on paper. That is the top hat strategy. We'll come up with something uh, later for hat. Um, helps always, uh, helps always totally. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> think on paper helps always totally. Uh, top hat. Wonderful, wonderful, Wallace. Thank you so much. Uh, I hear they're going to bring the internet to to Africa in some pretty big ways, and I can't wait to learn more about all of you people and your wonderful ideas, because you always have so many great things to say. We're going to have a great old time, provided they don't burn the internet to the ground. And uh, isn't it just amazing, the conflicts that are going on between growing it and controlling it and growing it and controlling it? Isn't that the way it always was? just seems to be proceeding along well. All right, so... Next thing you want to do is pump in your personal values. So think about what you value the most and literally ask yourself, what do I value the most and what I value the most is. And I'll give you some examples just from my own sort of thing and also what I've observed from others. And what's interesting is that when I've talked with Magnetic Mary Method students and when I've just talked to general people, they tend to value the same things that I do. And... Um, they all seem to follow these similar sort of things that are important to me. So, whoa, hit the wrong button there. Um, so I value accomplishment, and accomplishment can mean different things. But what I mean by accomplishment is that I value things that actually produce outcomes. And a lot of people confuse activity with accomplishment. So sitting down and doing some stuff is not always an accomplishment. Action, for action's sake, without a goal and a destination, or at least a system to support an outcome, that's just activity, right? But activity towards an accomplishment, that's something that I value. That's something that I cherish. So it's very, very important to not just throw out words, but actually think of how they're defined, what their meaning is. So I also value creativity. Now, what do I mean by creativity? I don't mean this nonsense stuff of creating something totally new, as if that's even possible. I don't mean that at all. By creativity, I mean being original. What does original mean? It means of origin, right? So it means the recombination of existing elements in the world. Anybody who thinks that they've made a painting and they're just like, look at my original, brand new, unique painting. No, 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 and a thousand times no. What you've done is you've assembled with the tradition of painting, as you assemble with it, because there's many ways to paint, and you've now assembled with the existing structure of the color wheel, 
that has been around for a very, very long time. You've assembled with the paint factory and you've assembled with the canvas factory and you've assembled with the figural parts of reality that help you integrate shape and form and color and depth and density, etc. And you're just reorganizing pre-existing elements. You're assembling with them. That's what creativity is. And that's how memory techniques work. Everybody thinks, well, I got to learn a PAO and I've got to do this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. But not reinventing it from the wheel, but always working from existing elements in your brain so that you are truly creative instead of working hard to invent everything from scratch. That's not what memory training is. That's not what memory techniques are. You are re combining pre-existing elements. And no matter where you are with your memory game, whether you're starting from the beginning or you're revising things, that's where you start to pop. When you start to realize that you have existing elements in your brain and existing abilities to recombine pre-existing elements, that's where you start to stop. And I would argue that anyone who learns how to paint or draw, when they really start to get good at that skill, it's not just because of motor skills that have developed. It's because they realize that they're rearranging pre-existing elements. Very, very interesting documentary called Tim's Vermeer that will demonstrate that for you. And that uh, Penn and Teller are the people behind that. Teller, I think, was the main force, but Penn is involved. And I really recommend that you see that documentary to help you understand that creativity isn't what you think it is, neither in memory nor in any other art. It's not that way in writing either. Uh, the great Canadian uh, literary critic Northrop Fry pointed out that poems always come from other poems. Always do, always. And uh, that's very, very true. All right, so that's what I mean by creativity. I also value sophistication. And what do I mean by sophistication? Not dumbing things down. I despise when people dumb things down. You want to go and watch uh, all kinds of other memory trainers? Awesome. But just be aware of the people who dumb things down or see how you could help raise their game by asking them to be a bit more sophisticated because sometimes they have reasons for doing what they're doing, etc. But in the memory world, I really do not like dumbing down the world of memory and I like sophistication. That's because people are more sophisticated than they think and they just need to be encouraged to do so. They need to be encouraged to do so. But if you're constantly guzzling down, you know, just the, the 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 producers of training who don't think you can handle it and they're just dumbing it down for commercial purposes because their business guru has told them, no, no, they'll run screaming. Yeah, run screaming from those memory trainers because uh, they, they're, they're not totally switched on to the capabilities of human, the human brain. All right. Knowledge and wisdom. I... Uh, I, I really uh, value this very, very highly. What do I mean by knowledge? Well, knowledge is many things, but one of the things in particular is it's the actual ability to say what you mean and mean what you say and understand what other people mean and what they don't mean necessarily and be honest and truthful about it through a scientific process of testing and not being so sure, not putting final judgment on things because you think that you've totally nailed the understanding. So it's a bit of humility and so forth. Again, knowledge means many more things than that, but that's a starting point. Wisdom is all of that plus actually having a plan in place to know more about everything because you're aware and cognizant of the fact that you cannot know what you don't know. And again, you're, you have humility about that, but you also are aware of what you do know you're open to it being changed, but you figure out what are the very concrete and very plausibly, quote unquote, true elements of there of that. And then you base things on that and move towards better and better knowledge through the application of wisdom. So um, that's a starter for that. Collaboration, of course, we're collaborating right now. You may not be aware of this, but we are. And uh, I love collaboration in every possible way. I think that we are much stronger together than we are apart. And of course, we're, we're together whether we want to be or not. And a lot of conflict comes from the fact that people don't realize that they are collaborating. Integrity by integrity can mean lots of things. One of the things I mean very, very specifically is sort of what um, uh, 
uh, Rohit is mentioning here where he says, I love your honesty. Well, it, it is a very, very important part of integrity to just, you know, point out some of the things that I mentioned that you're referring to there. Um, so, and then contribution, of course, is one of the highest values you could ever have. And it's why I always say the number one thing you need to do when you learn how to use memory techniques is to teach other people. Not only because it helps you understand them better and fill in your blank spots, but it helps you contribute to furthering this tradition. This tradition is bigger than all of us. And when we get to the end and I share some of the magnetic Mary method vision statement stuff, you'll understand just how committed I am to my highest value of contribution. And the beauty is the track record is already there. So you could test it for yourself to see if it's true. All right. Let's check in with the chat here. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing. And um, let's see. Uh, Kyle says, hey, Anthony, how would you go about recalling information faster? I had a five-minute timed exam and could memorize everything, but I feel like I wish I have faster, especially in these circumstances. Kyle, we're going to cover that question at the end. Andrew says, hey, mate, loving your work. Well, I love that you're here. Thanks for those wonderful emojis and uh, appreciate your kind words. And you're asking, have I seen the movie Limitless? Um, yeah, well, is that the one with Bradley Cooper? If that's the one, yes, I have. Confirm if my memory is correct on that, and uh, we can jam on that, uh, and I'll share my thoughts about that movie. Uh, Logos confirms that songs are born from other songs. Yes, indeed. Poetry is songs. And yes, uh, that's right. I believe it's called Tim's Vermeer. You really need to see that documentary if you haven't. It's amazing. And uh, the document, uh, the documentary logos is not with Teller. It's uh, directed, I believe, by him and, and produced by um, Penn Jillette. Or maybe they produced it together. You'd have to look up the IMDb listing for all of that. But in any case, it's a, it is a profound documentary for anybody, but specifically for those who have false ideas about what creativity is and to better understand how that you're going to to proceed towards actually being the creative person that you always were in a better way and in a more refined way. William says, Anthony, how about helping me with the distinction between dumbing something down and simplifying? Ah, that's a good question. So basically dumbing something down is when you go and look, I'm going to make a very specific reference here to memory training that I've seen. And you need to go and see if you've seen that yourself and we'll just take it in the context of memory training, but it also happens in many, many other fields of training. And it is perhaps appropriate in certain contexts, but in the context of memory, I feel that it's rarely, if ever appropriate due to the nature of what these techniques are. And so, when people for commercial purposes simplify because they're not going to be able to get rich, then that is bankrupt in every possible way. So simplifying and dumbing down can be precisely the same thing. And what happens is that there are endless stories told. So you sign up to a training and um, maybe it's something like learning an alphabet list or something like this. Well, before you even get to the stuff about the alphabet list, you have to listen to the trainer, tell a story for like 20 minutes, and then they just breeze over the actual technical stuff. And then they move on to the next story about the PAO or the next story, personal story about this, that, and the other thing. <sighs> so what you get, speaking of 80-20 rule kind of stuff, is like 80% la-di-da fantasy story stuff and embedded like what they call nested loops, which are often setting the stage for buying the next thing and yada, yada, yada. And they have all these people in the room and they're just like, oh, I'm super fascinated by this story. No, you're being hypnotized in order to push the margins of that person being able to sell you the next thing, right? Instead of just actually doing the training. But they know commercially that what they're, they're doing is just, it's a funnel. They're funneling down so that they actually have this sort of outcome. And if they make it too rigorous and tough, well, then those people are not going to go, that's their theory. Those people are not going to go to the next levels and buy the more stuff, right? 
There's nothing wrong with buying more stuff. This is the way the world works. This is, this is just the nature of the market and people need to innovate. And by the way, a lot of people have like these really negative attitudes out there about the way the market works, but they don't actually understand entrepreneurialism and they don't understand the pressures that governments place on entrepreneurs. So those people have to perform. They have to create new products. They have to have multiple trainings. They have to constantly do this because otherwise they're going to end up in debt to the government because they're actually taxed in advance on their incomes and yada, yada, yada. And uh, they, they just, this is this just the way that it works. And the best possible entrepreneurs, they actually continually create more value and they they continually actually make their people more capable of having more value or they play it the other way around which is they dumb it down and they simplify right so that those people are actually incapable of ever doing anything so to be more direct about your, the answer to your question william the only authentic goal of the true memory teacher is to free you from need for the teacher to free you from need for the teacher this is very very important because all teachers should have the goal of getting you in the door and out as soon as possible. And they have to balance this relative to each individual and trends and yada, 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 yada. But if that's not their goal, then they're, they're deeply in, in a, they're very, very, there's something off there. <laughs> it, this is, of course, admittedly my opinion and so forth. But again, this happens throughout all kinds of training things. It's not exclusive to memory training. It's called pain of disconnect in the business. They're trying to connect you so that it's painful to disconnect and so forth. But the actual goal should be that if you're going to continue, it's because you're now becoming just a supporter of the mission. You're part of the mission, right? And you're helping enable the mission, even if you don't even need more, right? But the reality is, is you also know that there's more to learn and you're being pushed towards more and more things uh, because you're having n either repetition of the key concepts or you're going deeper, you're getting new ideas and you know the 80-20 rule and you know that there are ideas coming that just one idea is going to absolutely rock your world and maybe you're waiting for it for a while, but uh, you're in there, you're in there. And so there's a bit of relativity to the things that I'm saying and it's not necessarily to point a finger at this or that trainer out there because they may have these things going on for people they may have their own mission statement etc etc but from my viewpoint there's a lot of rubbish in the memory world because they simply do not believe in your capability your capacity to deal with the reality of what memory training actually is what the ancients like Bruno actually did and uh they're, they're just delaying your ability to, to get it because they have fear that sh they won't hit certain goals and you won't proceed through a particular uh, program that they have in mind. I have none of this fear. I never have and hopefully I never will because the reality is, is that people are so much more capable than the market perceives or many people perceive. So I hope that that helps you understand the distinction between dumbing something down and simplifying. And, you know... This isn't, you also always got to take these things on a case by case basis. And if you're, if you're learning a language, there may be times where you need to take the initiative to see where you need simplification. Or as the student, you take the initiative where you need simplification. This is very, very important. And this is why the teacher always has to meet the student halfway. But the student also has to be able to say, I need this to be a bit more rigorous, right? And uh, they have to have the courage to do that. Anyway, it's not like there's a perfect answer, but the reality is, is why are there multiple martial arts? <laughs> why are there multiple levels of this, that, and the other thing? And, and why even in a single martial art do different styles emerge and so forth? It's, this is part of the reason. William says, I think you've covered one frame, but I'm talking about teaching 10-year-old Chinese students your techniques that in theory at least will reduce their nightly memorization load. Great. That's a, that is a, a different context, and this shows the power of specific questions and drilling down in conversation. Uh, so then you tell me what is the difference between dumbing something down and simplifying, and do you think that it's appropriate to teach what essentially is a very, very uh, sophisticated approach to spatial memory, autobiographical memory, figural memory, episodic memory, semantic memory, etc. to 10-year-olds. So now, 
is the question even relevant when we're talking about 10 year olds? So that said, have you heard the interviews with 10 year olds on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast? If not, I would recommend that you listen to those because Alicia Crosby and uh, Imogen Ayers, those are the names of the two young uh, women. I guess they're, they're much older now because this was years ago, these podcast episodes. They were both with their fathers. They showed themselves to be extremely competent. And that might give you insight and clues into the answer to your question. But at the end of the day, the reality is, what is the difference between dumbing something down and simplifying needs that qualification that you added? Because I assumed you're talking about adults. And as we know, assumption makes an arse out of you and me. And so that, that's my assumption there, my bad. But at the end of the day, we're, we're in a dance together. There's always a two-way street. And so uh, my question really, more finesse in your question could have saved some time, but no time was lost because I think that, as you say, I covered one frame. In any case, I don't teach 10-year-old Chinese students. And if I did, I would go in there making what is hopefully an educated assumption. And that assumption would be that my knowledge of what the needs and the capabilities and the competence of 10-year-old Chinese children is going to help me figure out the difference between simplifying and dumbing down. And I'm going to do the least amount of simplification in order to express the values of sophistication wherever possible. And the reason for that is that those kids are probably more capable than anybody even thinks. And we need to find that capability and then we calibrate on an individual level. And of course, I know there's going to be problems. What do you do if there's 40 kids in the classroom? How do you calibrate at an individual level? Well, that's a question for the educational reformers. Or it's a question for the individual teacher who has a little bit of entrepreneurial wherewithal because they might think, ah, well, what I can do is uh, work in a place that enables me to either have more assistants that are, you know, somehow on the same page with my philosophy, my educational experience, what I have seen work and is able to be flexible, adjust, help get it to every single student at the individual level so calibration can occur or whatever. And that is part of having a vision statement. You may want to think as an educator, what is my vision statement? And could I possibly serve these students better by doing something more on the entrepreneurial level so that 30 and 40 uh, student classrooms never happen, right? Never need to happen. That that ineffective way of approaching things is just not possible in this world. And you'd be surprised what could happen for you if you set that up. Now, on the matter of not dumbing it down for young people, I'll never forget Haiti uh, who hired me to, and this is really almost exactly how the Magnetic Mary Method started. It's a little bit more uh, of a, a bit of finesse. But she told me something that always stuck with me that, and this was with high school students. And she said, you know what I really like about what you do is that you do not treat them as anything less than the extraordinarily capable human beings that they are, right? And I think there was a little bit of concern there that I wasn't going to simplify things enough, but I pushed back and I said, simplify it for what? You know, I'm here to actually help these people move from high school to university. And if we're going to simplify things down here, what's the point? We, we actually need to get them capable in advance of true complexity, right? And we need, to, we, we need to actually treat them as individuals who are capable of the complexity that the world actually has as soon as possible. And I never in any way made anybody uncomfortable or anything like that. And fortunately, at Haiti's school, it was small enough to deal with individuals on an individual level, which is, is just a complete kudos to her for having the entrepreneurial wherewithal at her school to design it in such a way that that was possible which is why people went to her school, because the actual uh, public school system was failing them in every possible way. But she built a school that enabled them to actually have very, very small classes directed at a very specific goal, which was university pre preparation, so that they actually stood a fighting chance to deal with the complexities that they were not being prepared for by the school. And she was even worried that I was going a little too hard. 
No, 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 and a thousand times no. If anything, I didn't go hard enough. But it's only so many hours in the day, and I'm only one person. I didn't teach it long enough to actually um, experiment and explore and etc. And we sort of discovered many, many things. And I created a mentoring program, not a tutoring program, because I think tutoring is a just a bankrupt industry from top to bottom, but an actual mentoring program. And that was even better. So I did both at the same time. And it was actually mentoring with high school students and giving them assignments that were a little tougher than they were ready for. And that was just incredible. It didn't, didn't do it that many times because I was writing books and making the magnetic Mary method, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I even then in those books, always putting things a level ahead, because that's that that's just how you do things, right? This is partly coming from my from my experiences in Sistema, which is the Russian martial art where every student is the teacher. And it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. There's no bowing, there's no formations, there's no kata, none of that nonsense. It's just everybody is learning from each other and there is a guiding philosophy. There is a guiding principle behind how this is learned, but it's not through hierarchical stuff because in the real world, even though hierarchies exist, no one is necessarily subservient to them. Anyway, we're off track here a little bit, but we're actually totally on track because this kind of stuff that is possible, we're almost seven years now that I've been doing this full time. The reason it's possible is precisely because everything that I do has a teaching philosophy behind it and it works. It doesn't work for everybody, but I don't try to make it work for everybody. It's, I, work it, I work it from... Accomplishment, creativity, sophistication, knowledge and wisdom, collaboration, integrity, and contribution. And I assume that each and every one of you, each and every one of you, not a single one of you is incapable of any of this. But there are people out there who teach memory techniques who assume that you aren't. And they're just after, uh, they're just after the, the short-term benefit of ka and yada, yada, yada as our schools for 10-year-old Chinese students, as our schools for all kinds of people. And that is absolutely morally disgusting in every possible way. And so my challenge to you is you tell me what is the difference between dumbing it down and simplification. That would be something that I would love to hear. And I really, truly would. All right. Amara says, I want to be a heart. Excellent. I, I, I have a heart. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but um, let's see. Adolfo says, yes, Bradley Cooper started in Limitless. And uh, William said, oh, we got that. Wallace says, dumbing down is adding a lot of fluff to create more content without really adding more value. Simplifying could be making something more easily understandable. Yes. Uh, I don't think that simplifying necessarily makes something more easily understandable. What you might want to consider is the difference between learning styles now, there's some science out there where people say that learning styles don't exist. I think that's nonsense, it, it, but they're they're doing their usual science thing where they're asking the wrong questions and they're creating tests that produce outcomes. And if they just tested it a little different way, they'd probably produce better outcomes and so forth. But learning styles are simple. There's like people who really need to know what something is before they proceed. There's people who need to know how things work before they proceed. There's people who need to know why things work before they proceed. And then there are people who just say, shut up and give me the action steps, right? And uh, those people, um, you know, they, they get really frustrated with all the other things. So the goal of the teaching should be to cover all of that as much as possible and as often as possible to serve all of those particular needs. No one is perfect at it. And some people don't even try. They just go after the why people, the how people, etc. And it's not like there's a, there's a way to do it uh, perfectly, but there is a way to practice doing it. And that's the thing that we also need to understand is that people who practice teaching and constantly improve what they're doing are the ones to watch out for and to, to get behind, to support uh, as much as you can. And so um, Logo says, I think the memory palace technique is about as simple as it's going to get. That, there's great truth to that. There's great truth to that. Not only is it never going to get simpler than this, but you will make it simpler by just diving in and figuring out how to make it harder for yourself. <laughs> and that, that may sound like a bit of a mysterious statement, but um, it's, it's very true, actually, at the end of the day. 
All right, so we got into some pedagogical stuff, but that's what these live streams are here for. And um, yeah, watch out for that fluff because that fluff stuff is really just telling you that um, we don't think that you're capable of getting di just diving into the into the thing. Now, the the problem there is is that some people will see fluff differently, but nonetheless. Um, you do the best that you can. And I know that everybody's doing the best that they can. So any criticism for other things on the market must take that into account. I'm sure that they have their reasons, even if I find it a violation and you do as well. And even if they don't, they don't know what they do. Forgive them. <laughs> Logo says, what's the most important, inspiring, enlightening, insightful book on memory that you've read? Um, the most important, the most inspiring, enlightening, insightful book on memory that you've read. Logos, let me ask you something. Do you think that one book could have all that? Let me know in the chat if you think that one book could possibly have all of those things in the same pages. Uh, and I'm not dodging the question. I do have one in mind, but uh, I'm just sort of curious. It gets close. It gets close but I'm not sure that it actually fills that criteria, nor do, I, nor do I think it's possible or even desirable at the end of the day. All right. So back on track here. <laughs> Accomplishment, creativity, sophistication, knowledge and wisdom, collaboration, integrity, contribution. These are some of my values that I have put down on paper. You need to put down your own values. And then what you need to do is try to find out five reasons behind why that they're there. And then the next step, would you like to go further? Let me know in the chat if you'd like to go further while I take a little bit of a break here and get some water. And um, let's see who's alive and kicking. Hit me up with a chat. If you're just joining us, put the thumbs up and um, let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And we'll take a bit of a break and I will see how many people would like to continue in the chat. We're going to take this accomplishment, creativity, all these values and so forth. We're going to test them but I would like to see how many are interested in carrying on. I'm going to take a bit of a quick break. I'll be back in a few minutes and we will carry on. And for those of you who can't continue to join us and can't tolerate a two minute break, I promise the break will be inspiring, informational and interesting. And I'll be right back. But uh, chat amongst yourselves, enjoy and see you in a minute. Three, eight, four, six, two, six. Four three three eight three two seven nine five zero two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five. Hi, my name is Paul, and. I've taken a few courses by Anthony Mativier, but I felt that the experience of doing it today live was the biggest advantage. Anthony has a gift in simplifying complex concepts, and I feel that I've really come away today with practical skills that I can now use effectively. Um, it was great to immerse ourselves in the situation to be able to apply the time, because when we're at home, we may not take the time to do the memory exercises that we were doing today. I felt particularly that the thing that we did at the end of today was something that is totally unique in memory training, which is three days of memory, which is how to practice your skills. Um, I've read many memory books and I've never come across a system laid out as to how to practice what you've learned. And this is what I gained today from Anthony's course. So I, I give a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you. Five, three, four, two, one one seven zero <laughs> six seven nine. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for entertaining me on that quick little break. And uh, if you stayed with us, excellent. Thank you for that. And thank you for chatting while I was away. And um, if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And let's, um, 
<laughs> David says, bring it on, release the hounds. Ra ra ra. <laughs> yes, we need hounds to constantly chase away the evil Dr. Forget. Um, let's see. Slow Logo says you can just give your fave if that's possible. No, it's not actually possible because I love all memory books, even the bad books, even the books that suck. Um, but if I was going to give you one, I'd actually rather you tell me what that book is. But if I was going to just nail it down to one, it would be this one that I keep nearby all the time, which is A Question of Memory by David Burgess. Now, why? Well, I think you should read it, and I don't want to discourage anyone from reading it. But the number one reason why is because he makes the point that memory is not a thing. Memory is a behavior. And he talks about the Kennedy effect. And so if you can get those two things through your head and you really, really understand that, you will be free. And it's very beautiful. So that uh, would be the memory training book for sure. Uh, but there's a problem there because it's meaningless. Because here, And here's why it's meaningless. That book rests inside of a field of many, many other books. Many other books that you could never hope to catch up with, nor is it desirable for you to do so. But its meaning to me and me answering that question has no meaning necessarily to you because I have this frame of reference and field of cross-indexing it, this, that, way, and the other thing. And it means a lot to me because of that. And so really, again, the more interesting question is what is the most impactful and meaningful and philosophically fulfilling and action-oriented based best memory book for you? And I would challenge you that if it's just one, then you're not reading enough. So uh, this kind of let's just boil things down to the one book uh, strategy misses the whole point of literature, of knowledge in books or in courses and so forth. One is the most dangerous number you will ever know. And even boiling things down and saying, well, that one is a bit of a violation of what? Sophistication, right? Because the sophisticated answer is all of them. If you can find the time and the wherewithal through it, and I'll never find the time to read all of them, but it's very, very important to at least read as much as possible. All right. So with all that in mind, let's catch up with where we are. We need to have a number of exercises completed to get to this point. So if you're just joining us, you're going to want to watch the replay and catch up with this. And then once you have your vision statement and, or your, um, we're not at the vision statement yet, but once you have all your values down, the things that you value, David Burgess, Logos, uh, Logos, <laughs> Logos, David Burgess for you, Logos. No, it doesn't quite work. David Burglos for you, Logos. David Burglos is who is he's a British mentalist, very, very talented. And his mentalism is very, very hard to reproduce because of the amount of memory tricks that he did. And um, uh, yes, very, very good. So uh, that may be for the mentalists out there, especially important. All right. So push these things. So you have five reasons why they should be on your list. And now the next thing that you're going to do, because it does look like we have enough people interested in carrying forward, we're going to talk about something that may be a little bit painful, <laughs> but it's very important because let's say you've got at least this many values, things that you value, then you're going to eliminate some of them. You did all that hard work and now you're going to take some of them away. Yes. Yes, indeed. Because as I mentioned, testing is something very, very important and we need to test. We need to test, 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 test. And uh, as we test, 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 -ity test, we're going to eliminate things. So once you have the list, select the top three. Select the top three. And um, what exactly do those top three mean for you? Push it further. And five times why again? Because if they can't have the first round of five whys and they can't have the second round of five whys, then do they really, really belong in the top three? Think of that and actually do it. Push yourself. Now, look, if you can't get five, don't be like, oh, I'm a... just push, push, push. Experiment. Push, push. Why? Why else? Why else? Why else? Why else? This is a very, very powerful. Get into the practice of just why and why else five times. This is this is a good thing to do. And you know what? You used to know how to do it, right? Didn't you? As a kid? 
Why does things work like this, mommy? Well, answer, 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 answer. Why else? You know, like, but why? But why? But why? But why? My children, my child voice is not very good. I have to practice. But uh, <laughs> if you think about it, we used to do it all the time. As Tony Buzan used to point out, every child is both an artist and a scientist at the same, at the same time. They're always like grabbing stuff. You know, like Buzan used to have a piece of paper and show how the baby is like, oh, 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 and testing if they can crumple it up and, you know, putting it up their nose and putting it in their ear and like all this stuff. Well, that's just a childlike form, form of why, 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 or how, 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 what, what, what. We used to be very, very good at it. But as adults, you know, sipping on corporate television and uh, other forms of deranged mental disruption and dumbing down and oh well, we're simplifying it for you because we don't respect your basic uh, in, inborn intelligence you know like just get slaughtered with that over time you stop being like a child that's just a beautiful combination of scientist and artist right so these exercises should be approached with in mind that you're going to recover that childlike scientist and creativist uh, aspects of your personality. So block, just break it down, break it down. It's beautiful, beautiful. And uh, then what ends up happening is you might get blocked, right? Well, if you're getting blocked and you really can't find these levels of why, then switch to a different exercise. If you got those five levels of whys, just keep on trucking and uh, we'll get back to you. But if you can't, then we're going to switch to a different exercise. And to find what might be blocking you, look for at least four levels. So what are some life events in memory that hold you back? And by in memory, I mean, you know, look through your memory. Again, notebook, put it on paper, top hat, remember? Um, this is uh, very, very important. And you want to think about how exactly you could start to get that stuff out of your memory or change it. And we've talked before on the podcast and on live streams and on all kinds of videos about exercises that you can do to get rid of that. And just think about it because it can be that you're running patterns through your mind that don't serve you, that aren't true, and they're very internal. And those patterns need to be taken away. But it may also be that there are external systems of control that are blocking you. And those can be everything from uh, the way your family operates, you know, like interruptions at certain times because they don't respect your uh, boundaries around study time or whatever. It can be all kinds of things. Uh, it could be your boss. It could be that you're in the wrong profession. It can be that, you know, you're, you're, you're not able to change your diet because you have um, some sort of hospital diet or something. I don't know. Like those are external and you just, just even knowing what they are and thinking about them can help you find ways to change. Because let's say in this crazy world, you're trapped in a hospital and you're only being fed food that you know is actually not good for you, not serving you, but the external forces of the hospital are forcing you to have them. Well, when you then have identified that as a problem, you can then start to ask for alternatives and you can stubbornly push for them and you, you'd be surprised by just how flexible things can be when you say look i really need to explore an alternative please can you book me an appointment with the nutritionist and you know you look up in the hospital phone book and you're like hey there's a nutritionist on uh, level five and uh let's just make this happen you'd be surprised and like negotiation we started this whole live stream off with the whole principle of negotiation you can only negotiate what you're aware of right? You can only negotiate what you've actually written down and cultivated as your awareness of the status quo. So yes, you may be controlled by internal and external forces, but you can negotiate with yourself and with others based on your knowledge of that status quo and the work that you do to massage it into a better place. All right, so think of those things. And then what are the mental models that don't serve? Basically, one way to do this is to track your thoughts, ideally in one of these, and try to find what are some of the recurring beliefs that limit you and hold you back that just keep coming again and again. And again, you can sort, sift, and screen them by like, let's say you get 10, and then you go like, why? Why, 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 why? And then eliminate some, 
and just focus on the top three and then start thinking about and actually taking action that will help you eliminate some of those top three. So, you know, a lot of beliefs that people have is there's too much to read and it's all overwhelming. Well, that's a mental model. The mental model is the model that says this is too much and I'm overwhelmed, right? And you can begin to change that by then saying, well, what happens when I do this? I'm not being very, very specific about there's too much to read. I could say, how much exactly is there to read, right? And this goes to one of the questions that was that came up, and we're going to get to all the questions in today's chat before we leave. But there's something really, really powerful about changing this, oh, I'm so overwhelmed and there's so much to read, to there are five books that need to be read, and each one has approximately 200 pages. Because then that, that lets you do is have a new mental model. And the new mental model is, I'm going to actually look at the number of texts and the number of pages in those texts, and then I'm going to map them out on the stream of time, known as a calendar, and I'm going to budget and assign actual show up and read time. And then I'm going to break it down even further. Well, this book has 200 pages. There's five chapters. Each chapter has approximately, like you're always going to be approximately because not every book has all the same number of pages in each chapter, whatever. You're going to eyeball it a little bit, but be as specific as possible. And then you're going to say, first hour is this chapter. Da, 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 da. If you know how to prime, if you know all the stuff in the master mind, or sorry, the master plan course about all that, then you're you're going to hit the, hit the ground running even faster. But you know, you, you analyze what a book is. That's a better mental model than, it's so much to read, I'm going to be overwhelmed. No. And there's many, many other mental models that people are running that you can change. But you have to really catch them. You have to identify that they're there, catch them, and then come up with a strategy for changing them. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And all you have to do is do it. Just do it. All right. <laughs> well, I, I need to get on here one of those uh, one of those uh, meme buttons, and then we just have just do it. Okay, so that's more meaningful than you would think. All right. Now, what you want to do now that you have all this stuff done is set some goals and create new systems, and always think: This is my goal. Is it right? Do I actually have the competence right now to accomplish this goal? Because if you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in it. But then you have a different goal. The goal is to develop the competence needed in order to complete that other goal. And that happens many times in life. You actually have to take a step back, set the goal to develop the competence in order to get the goal. Everything you see on the screen right now is because I had to take a step back and learn a bunch of skills about the internet that I didn't have so that I could then accomplish the goal of holding live streams, right? Otherwise, I would have been overwhelmed. I would have been just like, oh, it's too much. I don't know, this technology, holy cow. Like, I have so many softwares open right now, you have no idea. And if I would just have this mental model that says, it's too hard, it's too tough, none of this would be happening right now. So if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up, let me know. You actually like this sort of stuff? Was it worth me not succumbing to the... Uh, nonsense mental model and having a better mental model, which was, all right, I'm going to break it down. There's this one software. I'm going to figure out how to use it. Then I'm just going to start by using that software. And I know there's this other one, but I'm going to get competence with the one and then I'm going to add the other one. So if you were on the first live streams, you would notice that they were just on this. I just figured out this, right? And then we started to upgrade and figure out another software and then another one and another one. And then and, and, and there may be some more, you know, but it's all one stage by the other. It's very strange. No one has said that they, uh, that they appreciate this at all. Wow. Well, good thing I have a balance in my own mental models. But uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I, think, I think all the people have been replaced by robots. Note to, note to, Note to, note to, if you know that reference to note to, let me know. All right. Anyway, um, you're probably all busy being Batman instead of yourselves. Isn't that right? Um, let's see here. So you're going to set some goals. You're going to set some goals. Nacho is alive. Great, great, great. And those goals are going to be working from your existing competence. And then you got to understand the difference between goals and systems, because sometimes your goal should just be to create systems so that you don't actually have to rely on your willpower right? Um, 
your willpower there's some people just say willpower doesn't work i don't totally agree with that that's ben hardy has that book and uh, i don't disagree with it but i don't totally agree with it because i think there are things called acts of will i don't think well, i don't think free will exists at all there's no evidence of it but um we're going to uh we're going to need to to think those things through but at the end of the day if you have systems in place you don't need free will you don't need willpower you don't need any of that and as i started out today i didn't feel like going to the gym i was very much in this grouchy mode this morning very briefly and yet miraculously because of having a vision statement and because of having goals and systems that support the goals like i said i found myself sitting on the floor and had this moment of awakening where i was just like wow <laughs> here i am despite everything in the universe seeming to be against me getting here so and that's a lot of working from existing competence all right david and harry good, good to know that uh, the 80 20 rule is in effect thank you everybody um if you're just showing up hit the thumbs up let me know where you are in the world what you're doing what you're thinking how things are going for you today and um by the way if you're not subscribed to this channel get subscribed here's the thing that i learned about youtube recently not only do you have to hit subscribe you have to hit the bell icon and you actually have to have your device allow notifications from youtube so a lot of people have been saying we're not getting notified about the live streams those are the now permission-based uh, world that we're we're developing into so give all those things permissions if you want to be notified of new videos more reliably and um there's probably more good to that than than bad but at the end of the day uh that's the way that it works um and so if you're not being notified then try those things uh to repeat click the subscribe button click the bell icon and then make sure your device actually enable is is allowed to be notified by um by the youtube aronis all right so now when you have all this going, you got to identify the steps, break the steps down, make them super simple, as simple as possible, but not dumb them down. Just simplify them so that they actually can correspond with your existing competence. This may go back to William's thing that may apply in that world of the Chinese class with 10 year olds. I, I really don't know, but I would think about what is their existing competence. And then instead of dumbing it down, make it steps that they actually can follow that's maybe simplification and then make a plan and then show up consistently and refer back to your vision frequently so i don't know if vision statements are appropriate for for 10 year olds but it's something you might uh, explore but it's definitely something for us as mature learners as adults as uh, individuals with the wherewithal to engage and interact and uh, again if you if you're in any way not able to engage or interact you might want to go to some of those previous exercises where you look at some of the internal and external forces in your life. All right. And with all that in place and in mind, I'm going to show you how you can actually compress all of this. Once you've done the writing, compress all of this into something visual that you can see every day, whether you're visual or not, but you can see and feel every day to rapidly make it possible so that you actually do show up and do the consistent work because that's what memory training is all about you're 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 going to need to work with this on a daily or near daily basis in order to get the skills so that they actually are meaningful to the point that you can just memorize on the fly okay and that's what you want i mean why else <laughs> why else do it if you're not going to actually become a master of the skill we had a previous live stream on how to master your memory that goes deeper into all of that what that means and how to get set up and this is just more depth into that in terms of creating a vision statement so that you can be more consistent about that so would you like to see a single way of visualizing on a screen or ideally on your fridge that's the way i do it uh, and sometimes multiple places so that it's constantly in your frame of reference and this is what has enabled me to travel the world to have multiple best-selling books and courses to be able to find the love of my life to be able to live where i want to live and it's just everything that is just amazing now it needs all of the stuff that we talked about today in order to be true and meaningful but you can compress it all onto a single page 
a single page that you see every day to help remind you so that you don't have to rely on your memory to, you know, somehow lose it. Just data for later. Yeah, I went through this exercise once in a while. Nobody's interested in this. Interesting, interesting. So um, I'm going to share it with you anyway. <laughs> I know some of you are, need to... Oh, he's asking something. I'll, I'll get involved in the chat. And uh, it, takes, it takes some time. David says, teach me to fish. Indeed, that's, that's exactly right. So none of this makes any sense unless that you actually do it. And doing, as you know, is the highest good, uh, highest good of all. And it's very, very important. So um, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> All right, Wallace is in. Excellent. Harry says, of course we are. Well, you know, we talked with, uh, with William earlier about the danger of assuming things. <laughs> Wouldn't want to bore anybody. <laughs> All right, so this has been really, really important to me. And what I want you to know before I show you the next slide, what I want you to know about this, and this is really important to know, is that... Um, is that I rejected this and I even did a version of it that was a complete mockery of the technique, that only slowed my progress. Both rejecting and denying it and making a mockery of it slowed my progress. Now, some things are as they are and they unfold as they unfold. So it's not necessarily the most horrible thing uh, that that went that way, but it slowed my progress tremendously. So keep that in mind and as they say, just do it. All right. So this is the first treasure map that I created. I've created many since. And, but this one was super impactful. And again, I rejected it in the beginning and I made a mockery of it. And the idea is very, very simple. Once you know what you want, you're actually honest to yourself about it. You've tested it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, you're going to then visualize it on a piece of paper. Now, you could do a mind map, but I think it's really, really important that you use images. And so when I was finally able to be honest with myself about what I actually really wanted, then I compressed it all down onto a single page. And um, what this is, is that I wanted to, I was just, when I just broke it down to the most brutal, brutal thing that I actually really, really wanted, I wanted to be on tour with a band. I wanted to find the love of my life. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to write lots and lots of books. I wanted to have a place where I could write. And I wanted to be able to memorize and play Bach on my bass. Kind of like weird stuff. But when I learned how to do some of the things that we're going to talk about, because we're, we're still <laughs> just scratching the surface of this, this is really, really important. When you just break it down, you forget about all the wealth and the objects and the numbers and all that sort of stuff and you just think about what you really really want then it's very very easy to make it happen and so what ended up happening before that I did this is I rejected the concept completely I was in a class and um, instead of doing what they were saying I cut out all of these bizarre things from magazines I wish I had this image and it's possible that I do somewhere um, in a, in like a Dropbox folder or whatever. And if I ever do, then I'll, I'll present it. But I made like a David Lynch weird, absurd cutout. And I said, the universe is absurd. It's totally stacked against all of us. And this is exactly what I think is going to happen. This bizarre, gray, evil looking nightmare. That's what I made. Now, if that's what you tell the universe, I don't know if the universe responds to our whims or not but it ain't gonna help you any, <laughs> and that's what I did. And it didn't help me any. But when I finally turned around and really, really took it seriously and just allowed myself to be honest about what I really, really wanted, the treasure map emerged. And so this picture of the people on stage, that's actually my band, The Outside, uh, or the band that was my band. I don't play with them anymore, but I guess it works in English, my band, my former band, The Outside. We were playing at the Pirate Cove in that picture. And um, this uh, is me there in the shadows. And I had a really nice Ibanez bass at the time. And this is Roland Peters and Sergio Klein and uh, Alberto Atala on the drums in the back, also fondly known as Tito. And um, we're at the Pirate Cove in Berlin. And wow, it was so amazing. But I 
due to certain reasons, I, I wound up getting a, a research grant and I left the band to go and teach in a, in a different part of Germany, uh, film studies. And, you know, it was, that was just my career at the time. But then I wound up in Vancouver and I wasn't playing in a band anymore. And I was kind of like miserable about that. So I knew that what I really, really wanted to be doing was playing a band. So I put that on the vision, uh, the treasure map. And I wanted to find the love of my life, blah, blah, blah. I want to travel the world, write books, et cetera, et cetera, and Bach. And so I put this on the, on the wall. And again, everything that you heard today, this was preceded by those exercises. And I really, really went through my BS and was like, no, this isn't true. And what really is true? Like, and some of the things on there were just like, oh, I want a house. And the house has to be this valuable. And it has to face this direction. And yeah, yeah. That was all stuff my girlfriend wanted. I didn't want that at all. So uh, I changed it, got rid of that and put these things on there. And I also wanted to have even better memory skills than I had at the time. And that's why I found this lovely image of love on cards. And I thought memory is going to be part of all this for sure. And so I started to work on memory again, but I just had this constant reminder. I didn't have to remember my goal because I had this on the fridge. I even had it on the bathroom, in the bathroom. I had it above the bed. So I always saw it before that I went to sleep and woke up. Anyway, I kid you not, within a couple of weeks, Sergio from the outside, he sent me one email and he said, when are you going to come back? and reclaim your throne. Now, I don't know that that's going to happen to you because I don't know what you're going to put on the treasure map, but what the heck? I just was blown away because I set my intention to be in a band again. And the band that I had left invited me back to go on tour. And I just said, I'll be there as soon as I can. And I, and I had to figure out now, how am I going to do all this? How am I going to you know, be able to do it? Because we, we're not U2, we're not Metallica or anything like that. So everybody has to fund themselves and etc. But I figured it out and I was able, I was capable of figuring it out because I had already decided I'm going to, I'm going to have all these books that I write and uh, bang presto, I wrote some books. And it was really weird too, because I'd already started memorizing Bach and if you've ever heard The Outside, you know it's very complex. Uh, it's basically progressive thrash metal. And it's just like, you know, if you're a sophisticated musician, you may be like, well, it's not that complex. And you'd be true. But uh, you'd be right. But it's it's pretty complex. But I had already gotten back into the, into the realm of that, my fingers and stuff, because I was doing Bach. I was prepared. And one of the things that you need to understand is where preparation meets opportunity, there is no ceiling. And so that was really, really great. And I was able to basically just land and get back into the rehearsal room and brrr, and be back in. But enough of that story stuff. The important principle is, is that you're true and honest and you are concrete and specific. Be concrete and specific. So I was very, very specific as much as possible. So when I thought about traveling the world and so forth, I actually listed down on the paper where exactly those places should be. And it didn't work out entirely that way. And there's still some places I haven't been to yet but I've st set the stage for going to them. And I'm sure that we'll knock it off eventually. Uh, but I also wound up going to places I never even imagined I wanted to go. And so this is where the exception to the rule comes in. Be concrete and specific, except not so exactly, especially in the, in the numbers part. Now, why? So this is, this is important to understand. It's kind of like reverse psychology. But um, what you want to think about is if you put numbers on things, like how much money you want to make, how many countries you want to visit, etc. Well, maybe not in the how many countries part, but certainly possibly in the how many countries part, you're probably putting a limitation on yourself, right? So if you say, well, I want to make whatever, 20 million bucks, even though that's a lot of money, maybe you're programming your mind to never, ex to never actually reach your potential. Now, the numbers don't even matter. If you really know anything about money, it doesn't really matter. What you need is enough to do what it is that you want to do and no more than enough, right? But if you're putting some kind of number on yourself, you may be actually programming yourself to limit yourself because where preparation meets opportunity, there is no ceiling. Always keep that in mind. And uh, same thing with countries. Well, I want to go to 26 countries. Well, maybe you're putting a limitation on yourself that you don't know yet. Maybe you just think about all the countries you do want to go to and let the numbers go. Same thing with books. How many books do you want to write? Well, if I say I want to write 500 books, 
that might just be placing a limitation on myself that doesn't need to be there. And you might be thinking, 500 books, who the heck has ever written 500 books? Well, apparently Daniel Defoe wrote many more than 500 books. Um, so it's possible, but uh, I just don't put numbers on those things. Uh, and I've heard this from multiple teachers on this topic, and I just pass that along to you. But at the end of the day, you got to be honest and you got to test your vision. And so I had to do this a couple of times because I wasn't honest with myself. And as I mentioned, some of the stuff that was on my list was really things that my girlfriend wanted. Not a good strategy. But you might make that mistake as well. And that's called golden handcuffs. It's called slave's luck because you might actually lead yourself to accomplish those things. And then you'll be miserable and you'll be trapped because you accomplished the goals of somebody else. And memory training is tricky that way. Because when you get your vision statement for your memory training together, if your memory training helps you accomplish something you don't actually want, then you're going to hate memory training because you're going to have used it in order to become the doctor to please your family or the lawyer to please your girlfriend or whatever that case may be. Instead of using your memory training to become whatever it is you really want to be, a great computer programmer or you want to be, you know, someone who's involved in this, that, or the other thing, music, whatever it is. You could have used all that time and energy and effort accelerated by the memory techniques to go where you want to go. Never forget, it doesn't matter how fast you go if you're going in the wrong direction. Make sure you're going in the best possible direction. You don't know what the best direction is, but you can go in the best possible direction. All right, so that was a lot today. A lot of granular detail. If you missed some of these details, go back through the replay. Or if you want to catch some of the important things at the beginning, go back through the replay. I do not know how long I'm going to actually keep this one up. I don't know that I'm going to take it away. But you also don't know when the internet is going to melt and they're just going to delete stuff on autopilot. So make sure that you put on your calendar that you do want to uh, go through it again if you do. And who here would like to hear the magnetic memory method, vision, and mission statement. Because I already have my memory training statement, but then there's also the statement of why I do what I do to help guide the decisions that I make so that in that theme of negotiation that we talked about at the beginning, I'm able to negotiate with the world because there is a vision and there's something in place, a philosophy. Let me know in the chat if you would like to hear all about that. I'm going to refresh my water here. And um, we're going to catch up with some of the questions that have been in the chat. Sorry I made some of you wait. Normally we just address them as we go along. <clears throat> but I did my best to keep everything as coherent as possible today. And I know I missed some of your chats. So let me know if we should proceed with the Magnetic Mary Method vision and mission statement to give you an example of what's yet to come. And um, I'll look forward to sharing some of that, but let's catch up with some of the chat. So let's see here, what did we miss? Smile says, Kaizen on command here, just popping in for a second to let you know I actually started looking into the free Magnetic Mary Method guide and we'll be studying it all tomorrow morning. Looks like it would be useful for memorizing large amounts of information for public speaking. Great Smiles, who is also Kaizen, Kaizen on command. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Good to know. David had said, when the student is ready, the book will appear. Yes, indeed. Indeed. You know, I sometimes think when the student is ready, the teacher is appear has it wrong. It's when the teacher is ready, the student will appear. But uh, uh, you, sometimes you also just got to take action and um, and make sure that you you read books that you're not ready for. You need books. You read books that have nothing to do with what it is that you want to do, and you'll unpack all sorts of things. David Ann Wallace had said, "Happy Father's Day to all fathers." Indeed, indeed. And um, David is interested, and Nacho is interested. All right. And um, we have many, many questions to catch up with, but <clears throat> let's carry on here a little bit. This is the mission statement. To provide inspiration and strengthen the esteem, memory, and memory abilities of people around the world by providing demonstrations and examples of how mature learners operate. And that's what we've done today because mature learners have a mission in mind. They have a vision that supports that, mystem, uh, that mission. And um, mystem, that's a new word. I like it. <laughs> uh, but it's very, very important. It's very, very important that this is what I'm doing 
to inspire, to strengthen the esteem. So many people do not have the self-esteem to actually give these things a try. They're broken inside somehow, so we want to help them. And believe me, I've been there. And these are the kinds of exercises that help me the most, the fastest, with the greatest depth and integrity. And if it's hard to get yourself to do it, then you got to work on that. That's what we're here for. And then there's the memory and the mental abilities. And so, so much of this has to do with getting yourself to be able to use the memory techniques. And if you can't, if you feel overwhelmed, then we need to work on that overwhelm, right? And of course, we're providing the systems to actually, well, there's a system of courses to give you the methodology needed to create your own memory systems. But all of it begins by making sure that you actually have the courage to dive in and do it and the encouragement to do so. And we get that done one way or the other. So that's the very simple mission statement. And it is my pleasure and joy to be able to strengthen your memory, your mental abilities, and whatever esteem that it takes to get there. <clears throat> and that sometimes means tough love. That sometimes means calling a spade a spade. And that sometimes means throwing a little bit of, well, mist around, if you know German, <laughs> at uh, some of the people who are clearly not serving people properly. And yet accepting that they're all part of the great puzzle of the universe and they have their place as well. David says, no smoke and mirrors from you. I like your straightforward, hold nothing back approach. Thank you. Oh, thank you for um, <clears throat> for your um, vote of confidence and really appreciate it. So now, how are we providing demonstrations and examples of how mature learners operate? I said at the beginning, I would demonstrate how that this has been going on all along. And one of the things that is very obvious to me all along and something you don't see other people doing, and they're actually very, very restrictive, shockingly restrictive in, in some cases, not all of them and not always, but shockingly so. And I just don't think that we're on the same wavelength. And I think I've done a lot to turn this around, or at least if I look back, I've been doing some of these things to turn this around, is that they do not actually share the existing things that are out there. They do not provide you with the demonstrations and the examples of how mature learners operate. But one of the things that I've done on the podcast always was to feature the others, to give them a place and to collect their knowledge together and their wisdom together so that people could know what's available out there. The Magnetic Mary Method podcast has had as many people as I can get on the show to talk about their approach to memory techniques. And that comes from a place of complete and total abundance and absolute lack of fear and worry or concern that you might go and get their stuff instead of mine. It's better if you get their stuff and mine, and it's better if you just get any stuff. Any memory training will be good for you, even the worst, although there is the catch that you might be turned off. But ideally, if you heard from myself or anybody else, whether they're alive or dead, like Bruno, etc., like you, you get this and, and you know at least that it came from a place you can go and ask questions about and that person is actually answering the questions. So many people tell me they can't believe that I'm answering their questions. And uh, they're like, yeah, well, you might want to ask those people that uh, aren't asking the questions why they aren't. Like, why are they so restrictive? You might find that they're not actually that restrictive or whatever. And I, I, I don't I don't know all, all the stories and I don't ultimately care. But at the end, I, I mean, I do care. I wish that they were more responsive. But at the end of the day, we know why they're not. And uh, that just makes it obvious. It makes it what it is, especially if you know caveat emptor. And so one of the things you need to consider is that if they haven't been on the podcast yet, why not? Because I've asked just about every single one of them. I've asked so many people that you don't even know exist, and they have told me some of the strangest things. Strange answers, and I just don't think that they understand human knowledge or how it works or what it should be about. And they don't have abundance. They don't have the abundance mindset. They are so afraid that, they, that, that I might, for example, rank their name on Google, and then I might get the traffic that they won't. They don't, they don't, they're not they're not on the same wavelength yet. They don't understand the collaborative nature of knowledge and the internet. And um, 
Maybe I'll turn them around eventually. Maybe some of them are listening now. Maybe you'll go and tweet at them and say, hey, get on that guy's podcast um, and uh, rock and roll. Then there are other people who have just like been completely deranged in leveling insults and personal statements and et cetera like that. And um, that's a good way to not, uh, to not have your stuff featured on the internet. Uh, in any case, to that end, coming up, we have some guests arranged. So Lynn Kelly, Memory Craft, if you haven't got this yet, if you're not reading it yet, please do so. I'm preparing my, my notes and i um, going to have a great interview with her. We've had an interview with Lynn Kelly before, and um, that was about The Memory Code, which is an excellent book you also should read. Memory Craft is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for her to talk about it and hopefully convince you to add it to your shelf. If you don't, that's fine too. But um, if you know the Memory Code interview, we know, you know, that it's packed with amazing knowledge that you can use to go and apply to your practice, provided you actually have a practice. And that's what we're all trying to do, the real good, authentic memory trainers. We're trying to get you to just get a practice going so that you can improve it over time. Ron White has said he will be on the podcast. Still don't have a date, but that's going to be cool. And so um, I'm looking forward to that because I, I think he's just one of the most amazing individuals. Why? Because he actually bridges the worlds of memory competition and things that are very, very large and symbolic, such as his uh, memorization of fallen soldiers and uh, reciting them, which is very, very inspirational to me and should be to you as well, regardless of what you think about the nature of, uh, of war and all that sort of stuff or whatever. This is just a very, very important, important thing and what it means, what it means to bridge the competition to a real world application is hugely inspirational to me and there's just not enough of it out there. We need more and more and more, as much as we can get. And that's one part of my vision statement. Part of my mission is to help inspire other memory people to help, that are very good in the competitions to bridge that gap. And But the truth is, is that a lot of memory competitors don't have large learning projects. And um, they're not necessarily ever going to write books or have courses or whatever. And so the very least we can do is... Uh, try to make that happen in certain ways through interviews and those interviews if you really really are already on 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 the way they will give you greater insight into how to improve your practice with memory techniques they will give you tips to follow up on different different resources you might want to look into to help fill in the gaps and at the end of the day if you don't know any memory techniques they will also inspire you and so that's part of the foundation there. Anyway, Scott Young is going to be on the show as well. So that's cool. And, and some, of, some of you, Adolfo in particular, have helped make that happen by emailing him and um, letting him know. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, Ollie Richards, he's been on the podcast several times before. Um, but, and we don't know that, we, we don't know for sure until it actually happens, but he's probably going to be here in this room in December. And we're gonna live stream together and, and, and do some things, I'm sure. Matt Dobschitz, he's gonna be on the show very, very soon. Uh, he's he, he he's part of Porn Free Radio, which helps especially young men, but also also anybody, women included, or whatever, whatever a person might be, deal with porn addiction. And this is really important because a lot of people ask me about NoFap and, uh, just sex and memory, et cetera, et cetera, sex addiction, and just the larger topic of internet addiction. So he's got some incredible, incredible things that will help you just build better habits. And uh, I share some of the things that I do to um, not get caught up in, in a lot of that stuff uh, as well. Stefan from How to Lucid, we're going to record something today, actually. Uh, he's amazing, and he's recently released something I absolutely love, which is the Lucid Dreaming Journal. Um, I know he has a last name, but he doesn't seem to make it public. So at the risk of, um, of, uh, being overprotective, I'm not having his full name there in case that he intentionally keeps it protected. Anyway, how to is, um, is a great resource and you maybe have heard us talk before or mention him before. 
All right. Now, in terms of giving more examples to people, as you may know, if you followed what I do in any uh, respect for any amount of time, you'll know that there's the great mnemonic example debate. And this is uh, something that is of great importance to me because I am, as David mentioned recently here in this chat, I'm here to teach you to fish, not to do the fishing for you. And even if I could do the fishing for you, it won't work. However, I've battled and puzzled over many, many times. How could I actually create more mnemonic examples for people and uh, do it faster and more comprehensively? And that is part of what led to the genesis of Edgar versus the evil Dr. Forget. So if you missed that on the channel, you might want to go check that out. And you'll notice that there are many, many discussion comments underneath that video. And those discussion comments are very important because they're going to shape future episodes of the mini-series or whatever it's going to become of Edgar versus the Evil Doctor Forget. And we now have more material than we could possibly ever use for season one. And the idea is that each season, I haven't decided yet, will have 10 or 12 episodes. And there's a narrative arc. The narrative arc was already decided. If you know some of my work I've shared before, how that I mind map plots, how that I follow the actual science of plot. I used to be a story consultant. I used to look at scripts and say, well, you need a little bit more of this and a little bit less of that and et cetera, et cetera. Some of those actually appeared on screens around the world. And uh, I got paid for that. So maybe I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But do I know about it in practice? Uh, we shall see. We shall see. I do have, a, I did have a, a very short term novel that did very well uh, called uh, Lucas Parks and the Download of Doom. And even there, it's very difficult to actually practice storytelling techniques. But at the end of the day, the point is, is that it's a means that enables me to share more mnemonic examples in a way that I actually think will help people because it shows you the theory in practice, and encourages people, inspires them in the form of a mature learner by the name of Edgar the Elephant, who's struggling to become an elephantologist to battle against the evil Dr. Forget. Now, of course, in true sophisticated narrative form, Dr. Forget is not actually the bad guy. He is definitely a force to be fought against, but we have a four-point obstruction, a four-point opposition. This is very important in narrative theory. But in any case, <laughs> four-point opposition, woo, and many allies. And of course, Edgar is not necessarily going to be the hero. Ooh. All right, so if you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments underneath the video for Edgar versus the Evil Doctor Forget. You can just Google that, and I'm sure it'll come up or just scroll through the channel. It was very, very recent. And thank you to everybody who supported that launch and showed that it was very, very interesting and useful to you. And if you haven't seen it yet, I look forward to anything you care to say about it one way or the other. And um, obviously I can only take into consideration so much of what people say, especially in the first season, but I think you'll, I've, I've drafted the, the, the next episodes and I think you'll really, really enjoy it, especially because of the narrative arc the complexity that I'm putting into that story and um, my willingness to fail because it could be absolute crap. As <laughs> as we've seen, a lot of people didn't really like uh, season eight or whatever it was, the final season of Game of Thrones. I've never actually watched Game of Thrones, so I don't know that much about it, but I did follow some of the massive disappointment in that. And I'm willing to take that risk to completely fall flat on my face um, with the narrative stuff, but all in the service of trying to do more examples. I have another idea for getting more mnemonic examples out there in a way that's true and real and authentic and actually meaningful. Uh, and it may be a great solution compared to what I have to say is a completely, at least in my view, bankrupt way of doing it that other people do it. And they have the dumbing it down problem for sure. But uh, more on that in the future. And you'll definitely hear about it if you're on the mailing list. And if you're not, then go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT. Start with the free course and um, rock and roll. So we're going to open up for questions. And as we go through the chat, if you want to dial in, I'm going to open up the phone lines for some calls. And um, if you don't want to, no problem. But we had a bunch of questions 
come up today. And now, finally, let's dive into them. I apologize if you're hearing noise in the background. There's been a lot of vacuuming going on. And I've just been using my best powers of focus and concentration to uh, power through that. Hopefully they will stop soon. They usually have had the vacuuming done many hours previous to this. But it's been a weird day. We started with a test of the fire system and all kinds of stuff. But um, let's get into some of our questions here. Hopefully I catch them all. If I miss yours, then please um, remind me if you're still here. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. This is your opportunity to call in if you like to have a chat or pump in questions in the uh, in the chat function there. And um, we'll catch up with all of the questions that I may have missed. And I'm just going to make sure as much as I can that everything's actually going to work here. Have this program open and uh, the volume as loud as it gets. Excellent, excellent. All right. So, um, Jiva had said, give us some tips about how to remember page to page. So I'm not sure exactly what Jiva meant, and there was no future quali there was no further qualifications of that. But if it if you mean memorizing page to page, there's a couple of steps here. The first thing is that I would suggest you look up how to memorize a textbook, which is on this. Um, channel and there's a podcast and there's on the actual web page there is a uh, an infographic that will help you and I can probably just dig up that URL right now and why the heck not um, but you can all I think if you just google it it's probably going to come up um, right up at the top how to memorize a textbook there we go and let's see what kind of uh, wizardry we can do to put that link in our chat here. All right. So that's going to be really the most crisp, pristine way to get through that outside of the masterclass. And there's a much more tight and detailed and in-depth set of ways to do that inside of the Magnetic Mary Method masterclass. Oh, I love how these weird emojis show up there for colons. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to prime and you're going to learn how to pre-read. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do some light mathematical calculations. Then you're going to make sure you have the memory palace network in order to receive that information in a particular order. And then what you're going to do is you're going to memorize from those pages after you've gathered the data and arranged it in the most optional, optimal form. Sound like a lot of steps? Not really. In fact, it helps me read a lot faster doing it that way. And even though I don't call it speed reading, it goes a lot faster. It's much more organized at the end of the day. And then it allows the information to get into memory in an organized structure that feeds what I call the rhizomatic structure that allows new knowledge to generate. And that's the most important thing because when you generate new knowledge, you're able to track back the path of memorization that shows you the individual parts that led to the new knowledge. And it's just a beautiful thing. It's like um, the evolution of your own garden in many ways. All right, let's see. What else did we have here? Um, so Avash said, Anthony, why don't you post time and date for your live sessions? So there's a couple of reasons. But one of the main reasons is that I often make a mistake in how that I describe this. I often say that I cured my depression. The truth is, is that I have cured my depression and am curing it all the time. And so what that means is that the battle against depression, I have no fantasy that it's ever going to end. And the worst part is, is that it's a battle against manic depression, which is that you have a situation in which feeling really, really good can be the worst thing that happens to you. Now, I do feel really, really good, but I don't feel like manic. And uh, if it happens, you'll see it. You'll notice it. <laughs> and I hope you notice it soon so you can send the uh, manic depression police after me and, uh, and get, get hold of it. Because strange things have happened in manic uh, episodes that I could have lived without. And some of them involve, just as a quick example, waking up in a train halfway across Canada wondering what the heck happened this time. So, <laughs> you know, like I just don't want that stuff. So I'm always curing my depression and my manic depression. And 
strangely enough, I fear them both. Well, I don't fear them, but um, I have the fear of them both. But in some sense, it's the manic part that's worse because you have to live with the consequences. If the depression wins, consequences are gone. Now, I don't mean to have dark humor there. And please, if you have any issues, see a doctor immediately and get the help that you need. And I'm not necessarily the best person to help with these issues because I have gallows humor. It's been part of how I survive. But at the end of the day, that, that is how I think of it. If, uh, if, uh, if it were to win, then problem's over. Um, but not really, because it'd be the worst thing. I have, a, I have a beautiful wife and I need to mitigate against those things. So that's the most direct and honest answer why I don't schedule live streams. It's just too, too much for me to have in my head that I'm going to show up at a particular time. And um, I already do do that once a week. And it, it, it is a bit of a challenge. So to do that twice a week is, is very, very, uh, it's just too much. And part of this whole vision statement thing is also to know your limitations and to be very, very direct and honest with yourself that you don't take on too much and you get more out of less at the end of the day. But you may have noticed that there's a bit of a pattern. I'll leave it to you to figure out what that pattern is. And again, if you want to know when the live streams are happening, at least make sure that you've clicked the bell icon and um, told your device that you want to, to have that bell let you know. Um, and also be involved in the mailing list as well, which you can get at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT, along with the free course and the free memory improvement kit that has helped thousands and thousands of people around the world. And um, it'll help you too if you take it seriously, you pay, it, pay it its dues. And um, the other thing is, is that I just simply don't want to have people show up and uh, not uh, not be able to show up. And and I, that's that's just it would be unfair to to people, and and then just not be there because it's beyond my capacity to um, to serve. So that's that's the reason ultimately. And uh, maybe things will change in the future, uh, but that that is ultimately the reason. And I I, I I I I do hope that things will change, but they will change when the time is right for them to change. But thank you for that question, Avash. And um, now you know. Now, Trong had asked, if we memorize a book, do we have to create a memory palace for every chapter of the book? And I mean every chapter, we have to create a memory palace for it. So Trong, great question. Have to is really, really a um, simple thing. If your question begins with should I, do I have to, um, can I, always the answer is the same. Try it, see what happens. See what happens. You, you've either got intuition on your side or you have a false bar barrier that you probably won't believe until you test it for yourself. So any any sort of permission-based question in memory training, the answer is always give it a try, give it a try, and see what happens. I myself might use a memory palace for every chapter, or I might not. It's a case-by-case -case basis. There is no universal answer to this. There really isn't. Um, you, you really want to develop your own mnemonic style and be flexible so that you can change it if you need to. Because I found early on, if I make that decision in advance, then I probably end up needing to change it later. Very, very, very important. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Trong. I know it's the more theoretical answer, but at the end of the day, that's what's gonna save you, is a grounding in the theory so that you can put it into practice and then theorize what you put into practice so you can improve your practice. Same thing in music, same thing in just about everything that's performance-based that I know of. Logos asks, have you heard of Tyson Fury? Um, it doesn't come to mind. It doesn't ring a bell. Uh, he has an inspiring depression story. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, and great for him. Uh, one more thing, too, I, I, I would add. Like, I, I sort of started this whole thing today with the negotiation of of um, being in negotiation with yourself and being in negotiation with the rest of the world. One of the things that happens to me from time to time is I will do a dietary experiment. And often that dietary experiment doesn't pay off. So I have like a red mark here today. That is because the dietary experiment was not a good one. And it affected my mood in many, many bad ways, which brings out the Incredible Hulk, but it also affected my entire body. There's all kinds of rashes all over the place. Now, why would I do the dietary experiment? Partly is just to 
you've you've got to test once in a while in what I have, which is uh, a psoriasis um, arthritis. And what can happen is you burn out on your diet and you create other problems because of the dietary restrictions. So that's like the sort of a longer story than we need to get into. But it's another reason why I don't schedule these live streams sometimes. And uh, the scheduled sessions that I do, they have a different style as well, just in case that um, I really don't feel like getting on camera that day because I've done some crazy thing. All right. So let's see here. Kyle had asked, how would you go about recalling information faster? I had a five-minute timed exam and could memorize everything, but I feel like I wish uh, to be faster in these circumstances. Great question, Kyle. And uh, hopefully you're still here. Uh, Basically, you want to practice being able to recall faster. So one of the things that you can do is think about your practice where it is right now and enable yourself to create a practice strategy that's going to serve that goal. So if it's facts, for example, if there's facts on the exam, then you might want to take a bunch of index cards and let's just say that the number 40 is a fact and that the number 01 is a fact and you memorize those facts and then you practice speeding up how you recall them from your memory palace. And then when push comes to shove, you will be in your um, memory palace and you'll be in your exam and you'll practice uh, the actual practice of recalling things during exams. Because understand that every exam is first and foremost an act of practicing to perform under the pressure of exams. So that uh, I hope will help you, especially if you have a five minute timed exam, because then what you do is you practice doing this under the duration of five minutes on a timer. Um, once again, if you want to call in or pump in any questions that you have, please do so. Number to call is 508-263-0530. And I'm catching up with the questions in the chat. Uh, we covered uh, things. Uh, Logos had asked, what are my thoughts about uh, the movie Limitless? So my thoughts generally about the movie Limitless is that Bradley Cooper is a great actor. Uh, it is a sophisticated plot and it follows many of what I think are the the rules to create a classic movie that will stand the test of time. So that's my general aesthetic and narratological assessment. If you have questions about um, what it means for memory, I would say that what it's trying to tell us is a lot of what I'm trying to tell you today, which is that the value of memory training has to be, it has to transcend the numbers game, right? So I shared with you earlier that in your vision statement, if you're going to create a vision statement for memory so that you are enabling yourself to have goals and systems that support your goals and you show up, what you're going to want to do is have proper outcomes, things that you actually want, that you've tested, that you really want. And so that movie teaches us that there's a disconnect between what it is that that character wants in the beginning and wh what he thinks he wants and what he really needs, right? And so the, every movie that is properly sophisticated has a, has a conflict between the character's driving ambition and what they really need. And so the whole reason why he gets looped into that adventure in the first place is he's confused. He's confused about thinking that he really wants his driving ambition and ignoring what it is that he needs. And that has somehow been clouded from his memory or his awareness. And so the adventure of the movie is that it enables him to learn that that conflict between his driving ambition and what he really needs has been dissolved. And so everything we're talking about today helps you never get into that trouble or at least avoid it or get yourself out of it if you get into it. And that's something that we need to do every day. And that's why these vision statements are so powerful. So imagine that movie again, and Bradley Cooper's character has a vision statement of what his memory should be like. And he knows the memory training exists. And he's just like, ah, no, not going to do that. So another version of that, and I've actually plotted out the story with the mind map is about a person who is seduced into having a memory implant 
And in the world of memory implants, he quickly discovers that actually this leads to all kinds of infections and diseases, and he's in so much pain that he's never actually able to do anything with the knowledge that he has. But if he had just known that what he really needs is to enable his memory to function the way that it, the way that it can with proper training, then he would be able to skip all that pain and suffering. And it's a bit of a tragic ending because he learns this lesson too late. Uh, so that's something that uh, you want to consider. All right. So Logo says, I didn't ask that. Um, I'm not sure what that refers to. Here's a, just a general tip, guys. Using words like that without you know referring to what exactly that means can make it very difficult for people to understand what it is that, um, that you're talking about. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. Further questions that we may have missed. Uh, da -da -da. So... Well, let's see here. We had the inspiring book question, which I hope I gave you the highest possible level answer there. And um, I hope that it helps you. I think we're getting pretty much ca caught up on all the questions. Amazing. And if there are no more, and no one wants to call in today, no problem. Well, have I ever used uridine monophosphate? Uh, not to my knowledge, no, and I don't think that I will. Generally, I don't think that any kind of supplementation is of any interest to me, although what I have uh, supplemented with is called HCL with pepsin, and that's not for brain performance, but for, um, for digestion, which probably helps with brain performance. Logo says, very good, thanks. It says it's out of print. So again, this is back to this thing with that. That, it, I'm not sure um, what you're referring to as being out of print. If you're talking about on the shadows of the ideas, yes, that is out of print. I have heard a rumor that they're going to do a paperback version. If so, that will be great. And um, if they don't, that would be sad. Um, right. So, uh, okay, try vanishing magic for the question of memory. If you're not able to get it from there, then I don't know where. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful book, and it's worth every penny if you have the discernment and the wherewithal to recognize true value when you see it. Maricella is in the house, says, Hello, Masterclass and guests. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you as well, Marichella. Even if you're not a father, happy Father's Day to your father and um, to all fathers everywhere insofar as... Um, look, here's a, here's a problem. What day isn't Father's Day? Why do we put it on one day? Yeah, yeah, I get the symbolic uh, sort of thing. Like, you know, we recognize this and make it special one day. But why do you forget the other days of the year? Shouldn't every day be Father's Day? Shouldn't every day be Mother's Day? Shouldn't every day be Children's Day? Shouldn't every day be your happy unbirthday? Shouldn't every day be amazing for all people? Put into practice gratitude for all fathers every day. Forget about this compressing it into one day nonsense. Do you know how meaningless it is to just be like, oh, it's Father's Day. You no, know, like every day we should have this thing that we recognize each other. We recognize each other for the most amazing and wonderful creatures that we are and hold that in such high and special regard. Doesn't that make much more sense? I think so. Not to poo-poo or rain on anyone's parade for enjoying Father's Day or feeling acknowledged on Father's Day, but man, some of these things make me <laughs> wonder sometimes about <laughs> our traditions. <laughs> Just doesn't make sense to me. You ever see that um, Bill Hicks thing about uh, about Easter? <laughs> if not, you're missing out. Look up Bill Hicks and the Easter joke. Smile says, do you think I could use memory palaces for Brazilian jiu-jitsu moves? I don't think you can. I know that you can. The question is, are you going to? And um, yes, yes, you can. However, to what extent it will be useful to do so, I 
don't know because I don't do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And uh, I have sparred with people who do do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and I don't want to make a claim that's too high, and I don't want to invite anything because I haven't trained for a long time. But I still think that I'd be okay. And the reason why I think that is because when I did Sistema, there were a lot of people who had all kinds of locks and holds and all that sort of stuff. But even if I got a little bit ruffled up from time to time, I still could escape them. And I don't know how good they were, to tell you the truth. And I don't know what good would mean there. But um, memorization of moves in any martial art, you just should check out the Sistema alternative to the memorization of moves. It's really, really um, interesting. And this is one of the reasons why in memory training, I recommend and teach that people not memorize things in order to memorize. You want to be more flexible than that. Even if you have a 00 to 99, you still want to be flexible to the moment, right? You, so not only do you want your 00 to 99 to be based on things you didn't have to memorize as much as possible, you also want to be able to create new ones on the fly no matter what, because the whole role of the memory training is to be prepared to execute one final move, even with your head cut off. Very important. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. And Sistema has that in the martial arts world. And I brought it from Sistema into the memory training world, even though it may have been there before and I just haven't encountered it. I don't know. Um, it might be there in some ancient text. All right. Logo says, chocolate log in the sock drawer. Bill Hicks, my favorite comedian. <laughs> he is indeed worthy of being all of our favorite comedians if we have that sort of taste. But um, one has to be careful. He may be unpersoned from the internet and then the robots may find this live stream and un, uh, un, un it, un it, whatever that would be. That'd be the new word, the code word, in case even unperson gets uh, unpersoned, the un it. We'll come up with new words. We'll come up with our, new, our own version of Newspeak. Amazing. In the future, new languages will spontaneously emerge in order to avoid the policing of our language. It'll be a constant, endless um, iteration. I think this is kind of like William Burroughs' territory um, where <laughs> the virus uh, of language would be constantly modifying itself in order to avoid uh, policing in interzone. Not exactly the Burroughs thing, but I'm riffing on it. I'm innovating on it. All right, this is our first time since we did live calls that nobody has wanted to have a call in. I think we've covered all the questions in the chat, so miss hearing some of your voices, but that's okay, that's okay. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you'll check out Tim's Vermeer. I hope you will follow through all of these ex exercises that we talked about today. I just about said the exorcists. <laughs> but in some sense, they are exorcisms, aren't they? Um, you might want to think of that. They're, they're both positive, but they're also trying to help you exercise uh, in a self a self-induced exorcism, some of the ghosts of the past that you are potentially using against yourself to hold yourself back. And that is why it's very actually uh, interesting and opportune that Limitless came up. So thanks for mentioning that today. And yeah, stay tuned for some of the things that we have coming up in the future. And let me just end with a big old thank you very much, everybody. If you are new here and you haven't subscribed to this channel, get subscribed, click that bell icon, tell your device that you want to um, let it, you know, let you know of these if you indeed do want that. And come to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT. There will be a coaching series coming up. You'll need to uh, enable that coaching series when I offer it. And these will be very, very simple and direct emails that dive deeper into some of the subjects that we talk about today, but you will not receive that series if you're not uh, a subscriber to the email list. And um, I hope that you will um, do so and take the free course. That free course is very simple. You just take it, you apply the techniques and you will receive many, many wonderful benefits as a result. And, uh, and then of course you can deepen that training if you wish. 
as I do hope that you do. And I see many people today whose names are familiar and have done so, and uh, many new people. Uh, really um, special, special, wonderful thanks for all the people like Reclaiming Life and Crone William and William being here, William Butler, uh, and then Nacho, welcome to the family. Thanks for letting us know that you uh, just recently got in and to all the people who are thinking, if you're sitting on the fence, let me know what it is that you need to know in order to uh, come on over to the other side, because I would love to uh, crack that code for you. If there's any things rolling around your head, like any answers that you you need um, to ask questions in order to trigger off, just let me know. Even if you don't know how to frame the question, just let me know. Because basically the way the training works is that you learn and you implement and then you make sure by studying some more inside there, revisiting things. I always encourage you to take the course multiple times in order to make sure you unlock everything. And like if you want to think about it as, you know, the initial belt in a martial art, I don't believe in belts in martial arts, but there's the first time through. And then, you know, I update the course and stuff and add a little new detail based on questions. The FAQ section gets updated, etc., And you just progressively plug in new things. But most people within two to five hours after taking the master plan, which is the core course in the master class, they can do this. They can do this very, very well. We've had people like William Goering go off and break not one, but two Canadian records. Isn't that amazing? So if that's your if that's your gig, go ahead. You can break memory records if you want. I'm more excited, pers- like with all due respect, <laughs> I'm more excited to um, help people learn languages and uh, and 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 break the records of what they think their limitations are by encouraging them through techniques and training and inspiration and examples how that this can be done. And if anything, there are too many examples out there and too many examples in the masterclass, but it depends on the person. Some people there can never you know, be enough and to other people, there's, there's just too many. And I think we've got it right. I've done a lot of calls with people and I asked them, what should I change about the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass? Without a doubt, every single one of them that I've talked to has said, don't change anything. There are certain little requests that we plug in over time, but sometimes they get removed because they actually don't pan out as well. They don't really help as well as we might have thought. But there's a lot of testing there and so forth. But at the end of the day, this is a very communicative approach. There is self-study. There's always going to be self-study in memory training. There's no getting around that. It's your head. It's your memory. It's your mind. Nobody else can do it for you. There is no limitless pill coming. But you already have all that you need to unlock that limitless memory from wherever you are. You already have it. You just need to see it. A lot of it is just shifting perspective. There's so many people who say, oh, I just still don't understand the memory palace technique. I still don't know how it works. And I say, well, what have you done? Oh, nothing. I'm just waiting to understand this one thing. Well, here's what to understand. Please understand this. You understand it by doing it. If that is what's holding you back, then you just need to start doing it. And if you don't know what to do, then ask. Ask. And even if the answer is take the course, and then, you know, then taking the course means filling out the exercises. It means drawing memory palaces. It means actually memorizing some stuff, right? And then you say, well, what stuff? Well, there's a vocabulary builder in there. Or if you just don't know, then, you know, ask and we'll figure it out for you. We'll get you sorted. But at the end of the day, if you're just waiting to understand this before that you start doing anything, you are locked in your own prison. You are locked in a prison that you have created. It's the prison that is, forgive yourself for it. Sometimes I do it myself too, and I have done it, and I've, I look for it, and I release myself from it through action. And sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable, but that's where growth happens, outside of your comfort zone, right? And just as an example, so much of what I've learned on the internet, I didn't understand it, but I always have to remind myself, understanding it in advance isn't going to happen. It can't happen because you have to do in order to see how the parts move together. And from the outside, it looks like a lot of moving parts. 
but it's not. It's actually a very, very single movement. I always use the samurai metaphor, right? Execute one last move, even with your head cut off. Yes, you might be. You walk into a room, you meet a new person, you want to memorize their name. You might actually, if you break it down, be using multiple parts. But when I walk into rooms and I memorize 30, 40 names or whatever the heck it is that's in there, I'm actually doing it as a swift, singular movement. And it is combined of multiple parts, but it happens as a swift, singular movement, even if it is comprised of multiple parts. I never would have understood it in, in, in advance either. But I was fortunate that I had a number of training experiences in my life previous to this that I knew to not try to understand it. Because you don't understand it in advance. You won't understand it in advance. So if that's what's holding you back, then just do it. Follow the steps. Those steps might not be exactly the steps for you, but as you know from today's presentation, part of the mission that I do is to make sure you have access to as many teachers as I can present to you. And that's why you can go to the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. You can listen to Lynn Kelly. You can listen to Tony Buzan. You can listen to Phil Chambers. You can listen to Nelson Dellis. You can listen to Mark Shannon. You can listen to Tenzel Ali. You can listen to Alex Mullen. And I hope to have all of them on the show again in the future because I understand something, which is that some people will think that things are dated and they're not going to go back into the past. Well, here's a wake-up call for you. Memory training does not date. The human brain is not going to change in any order, anytime soon. So all of the Magnetic Mary Method podcast from episode one to the most recent episode, we're over 250 episodes now, every single one of them is evergreen, will never ever date. Even if Neuralink becomes a real thing and people don't need memory techniques anymore, you're still going to need memory techniques because I guarantee you the first thing they're going to do is figure out how to pop advertising into your head and brainwash you so that you don't use your, your, your fullest possible intelligence. And then you're going to have to figure out how to unpatch yourself. Morpheus is going to need to come like the real Morpheus to unhook people from this horrible matrix. And then the first thing you're going to need to learn is how to properly learn. All right. So at the end of the day, What's going to happen is that these wonderful, wonderful things that so many people have helped me create together in collaboration. I didn't mention Brad Zupp yet. I haven't mentioned Dr. Gary Small. Like there's so many people on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. Jonathan Levy, you know, it just never ends. There's so many people. Scott Gosnell, who translated another version of this book. So this book is not available, but Scott's translation is. So you can go and get it. And you don't know this stuff if you don't go through the whole back catalog. Now, do I expect you to go through the whole back catalog? Not necessarily, but you should at least know that it's there and you should know that it's not going to be dated and you should know that it's designed to work in conjunction with the Magnetic Brain Method Masterclass and everything else we do. It's all just... So it's there for you. And um, please avail yourself of that material. Because if you are holding yourself back and you just need inspiration, you need to hear the right thing, eventually the right thing will be there for you. And there's many, many other teachers for you to follow and many more to come because I've made it my mission to get as many of them as I possibly can into conversation. And, um, if you know, the, the audience has grown for this. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. And thank you to all of you who help make it continue to grow. It can be as simple as just hitting that thumbs up, leaving comments, on the videos, coming to, ideally to the actual Magnetic Mary Method site, getting involved in the discussions there, and um, making sure you help me train the robots to know that humans actually care about this stuff because it's the robots that are making decisions. And they're doing it based on what I think is actually not the greatest thing, which is user metrics. And they don't really know what people are thinking inside of their heads. They only know what buttons are getting clicked and so forth. And uh, as good as there are good things to that, there are many, many things that I think we're seeing are worse than worse. And now they're now they're changing a lot of things and so forth. And who knows where it's all going to go. But we can help make it go in the best possible direction by making sure that whoever it is that, that you admire out there who's actually legitimately teaching you and helping you, you're, you get behind them. You get behind them by training the robots that live in their world and dictate how visible they are on the Internet by leaving their, your comments, getting involved in discussions, hitting thumbs up, sharing stuff, etc. And as uh, Chrome Woman Walking did today, I really appreciate the super chat. And that really does help. Every single penny helps 
me continue helping you and bringing on all these people. And it you know gives me the time to be able to read Memory Craft by Lynn Kelly so that I can ask better questions on the interview. You know, one of the things I'll never forget is having a guest tell me, and it's happened many, many times, but uh, Nelson Dulles was the last person who told me. He's like, this is amazing. You actually read the book. It's such a different conversation. And I don't know how many interviews he did, and I don't know how many other people that he did it with, but I'll never forget that. And it's not the first time I've heard it, and it won't be the last. This makes a difference. And a lot of people are listening to interviews, and it's just the, you know, we talked about Bill Hicks today. The, it's, the, it's the sheeple interview. <laughs> the interviewer hasn't even read the book. And I saw Larry King <laughs> do an interview, and uh, it was with Bobcat Goldthwait, I think. Uh, and uh, he's just like, I haven't even seen the movie. I haven't seen this yet, and I'm doing the interview. And it's just like, okay, Larry King, you're you're uh, you're you're experienced enough to 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 hop off and and do this kind of thing, but what a much better interview it would have been, don't you think, if he'd actually seen the documentary? And I see this all the time now. People are in such a rush to get things out to crank out the new content. They're like, oh, I got to admit, I haven't actually read the book, but let's talk about it. It's just it doesn't make for for even remotely nearly as good a discussion or an interview, wouldn't you think that it would be better to just relax, give the person time to read the book instead of the old churn machine? I do. I could be wrong about that, and I'm happy to be corrected if there's correction coming. But be cautious of the interviews that you're listening to because sometimes those questions are not nearly as powerful as they could be even in the best of hands. So, Smile says goodnight, y'all, and that's wonderful. Thank you for being here, and um, thank you for having multiple usernames. <laughs> Kaizen is uh, also an another one. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to pick favorites, but uh, was it Kaizen, Kaizen on Command? I think that's what it was. Um, really like that. If I had to pick favorites, I would I would make that one my favorite, assuming that memory serves. Looking through the chat here, seeing if I can find it um, to confirm my own little memory test live under pressure. I can't find it though. My eyes have gotten tired looking at the chats, but I appreciate you having been here and um, wonderful, wonderful to see you all today. Lyron Latkem says, I am watching. Interesting to be able to boost memory one day and try to cultivate my mind. Well, let's end with the words of the great Yoda. <laughs> there is no try, my friend. There is no try. Just do it. And um, decide after. Decide after. Kaizen, Kaizen on command. I guess, did I get that right? I think so. <laughs> You guys should try doing one of these things. It's one of the greatest memory challenges that you'll ever see. There's so many things moving around, and um, and it's a lot of fun. All right. So Logo says, I don't know how you pronounce that. I don't know enough about Welsh to um, – I don't know anything about Welsh, actually. Uh, I'm not even sure that it is Welsh that they speak in Wales, is it? Um, Hoyl, maybe. In any case, I appreciate – that greeting in your language logos appreciate you being here so active and um i got it right with the kaizen on command i love that i love that and i love you all so thank you very very much for being here today and come visit me at magneticmerrymethod.com until we have oh i did say it well great well <laughs> Here's the world's smallest violin playing just for me. Congratulations. Congratulations. But I'm glad. And thank you for confirming. Glad you're still here. And I want to thank you for being so active today in today's chat. Really, really appreciate it. Annika says, well done, Anthony. Well, thank you. And well done to you all. And I really, really want to hear from you if you take these tips today in crafting your vision statement. Get it on paper. And at the last point, notice that I didn't suggest that it needs to be some kind of essay or paragraph. It's really just answering questions on the paper. Don't make this a perfectionist thing. Perfectionists aren't even good at perfection. Go back, follow this through, just answer the questions as we go along. 
jot them out and enable yourself to see what comes on the page. Don't take it as law. Be suspicious of everything you say. Find your own BS. Look for the things where you're just trying to please girlfriends or family members or your bosses or whatever. Look for your real self, who you really are, what those values are. Churn through them and push towards that wonderful, wonderful version that you know is true and you know it's true for you or you know that the truth will come if you just keep practicing the practice of finding it and you know that truth is always subject to change and all the more so in the right direction when you're scientific about the process which is that you just keep doubting the validity of your claims and you put them to the test progressively over time test test and test again and you'll continue to improve noting that you always can progress towards better and better and better because practicing the art of improvement is the best that it gets there's now and only now even in johannesburg where it's morning there's only now and that's all there's ever going to be there is no past there is no future and there's a lot of other things that there aren't, including all the junk that floats through our heads so much of the day to all of us. And I shared my story this morning with the gym, and it was gone like that the instant that I caught it. But I had a time in my life where I couldn't catch it, and I would be off on a tangent for the entire day. And you know what that did? That allowed the evil doctor forget to get hold of my soul and make it colder and colder and colder until I figured out how to get it warm and this was part of it. So I hope this helped you out today and I hope you put it into action and I hope I hear from you based on what you do to do it and what happens afterwards because you're in for a wonderful ride. Thanks again, everybody. Until we speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye. 3846261. Four three three eight three two seven nine five zero two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five. Hi, my name is Paul, and. I've taken a few courses by Anthony Mativier, but I felt that the experience of doing it today live was the biggest advantage. Anthony has a gift in simplifying complex concepts, and I feel that I've really come away today with practical skills that I can now use effectively. Um, it was great to immerse ourselves in the situation to be able to apply the time, because when we're at home, we may not take the time to do the memory exercises that we were doing today. I felt particularly that the thing that we did at the end of today was something that is totally unique in memory training, which is three days of memory, which is how to practice your skills. Um, I've read many memory books and I've never come across a system laid out as to how to practice what you've learned. And this is what I gained today from Anthony's course. So I, I give a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you. Five, three, four, two. One one seven zero <laughs> six seven nine. <laughs>